Your family was yeah. the smallest. How many were you? I, I would say 16 plus four, five mothers. Yes. So we'll be 20 something. But <laughs> other other families, uh, come on. <laughs> there were uh, many. Yeah, come on. I can, just that I can't mention names. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> you would find, you know, we have, we have a team in the village. And you find, you know, um, the team dominated by a particular family. <laughs> <laughs> because there are just many of them. No. So you don't remember not liking it. Not really, not yeah. really. You just, I just remember, you know, too many people. <laughs> <laughs> too many people in the house. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, I would say that. So, so when you're young and, and growing up, you cast your eyes onto the mountains. That then becomes your horizons, and those mountains becomes the end of your world. Mm. And what I like about hiking is that the higher you go, you see a different view. Mm. But as you go and you know, you can't see a view, you become more nervous. <laughs> but it's in that nervousness where you feel encouraged to go because you're seeing the sky like, oh, True. when I get there, I might touch the sky. You mm. Sometimes then you think like going. a child yes. and then you keep going because it's encouraging. But when you're up there on top of the mountain, the view is even better. I'm like, wow, so this is it. I was scared, I was scared, man. <laughs> I was scared, but excited, like, wow. We didn't even have, a, we didn't have camera phones at the time. So no. when you go back in the village and say, guys, ah, live, say you're live. live. I'm like, ah, you are lying. No, know. but they knew what we were capable of. Yeah. Dude. I was the man. <laughs> <laughs> you could have you could have taken a wife. Yo! I no no no. That was a no go area. Yo, that was a no go area. King King David Studio podcast. I have a chief. It's not every day I have a chief in the in the studio. And this is a man who'll carry the name of a chief for a better part of his life. And mm -hmm. And we'll find out today if he's a real chief because I think he should co he should create his own clan now. I no choice anymore. Uh, Gabriel Geb Temuzani, how are you doing, sir? I'm good, sir. How are you? I'm awesome, eh? Yeah. You're lot. You're jobless. <laughs> By choice. <laughs> I'm a spy. <laughs> it's one of those. It's one of those. Um, but I think you know, it's just opening a new chapter yes. in my life. Yeah. Um, challenging, um, scary. Oh. But the power is in propelling yourself forward, and mm. um, as you propel yourself forward. You then see, you know, uh, different mountains, uh, different rivers. Yeah. But your eyes must remain on the horizon, you know, and because that's where you are journeying uh, to. Is it is it something that's been in the back of your mind for a while? This this moment. Well, <clears throat> there's time for everything, yeah. and time is controlled um, by a number of factors. That's the time that I'm referring to. And I think it is, it's something that has been like coming and um, I've traveled a very long journey um, with the show that had employed me for more than 23 years. Mm -hmm. And I, I think at some stage I felt like, you know, I've served my purpose mm -hmm. and I thought I should, you know, um, uh, bow before. I become stagnant. Yeah. Uh, yeah. When <clears throat> did you start feeling like I've served this? This is good. So the other day we were uh, chit chatting with my daughter, and um, she jokingly said, You know, when I was growing up, um, the first thing I saw, I saw you on TV. And today, 16 years later, you are still on TV and you still look the same. <laughs> and <laughs> that got me thinking to say, what are you trying to say? Yeah. Um, she said to me, but did you, you've been here um, doing one and the same thing. Um, don't you get tired? Uh, I said, no. Mm -hmm. um, this is, you know, what's bring you food and take you to school and everything and anything that we have. And I was, you know, being frank. Yeah. And as the conversation um, unfolds or uh, unfolded, she then said to me, um, so people will only know you for the role, uh, Yazindin. Why do you say that? She says, yes, you have done other things, but this one, uh, it's like a flag bearer. Mm. 
Mm. Kira, of course, that was a deliberate move. Yes. And um, uh, she asked as to what do you mean? Uh, like, you know, um, I can jump from one show to the other, but that won't carry any brevity in comparison with the show that I'm in now and the role that I'm playing. Um, because I believe that the role that I'm playing, it's iconic. Mm -hmm. And the show that I'm in is legendary. And I started breaking it down for her to duly comprehend. Mm -hmm. and, and she got it. Yeah. And upon getting it, she said, no, now I respect, you know, um, your decision and why I understand why you have stayed this far. What, in your opinion, was at the core of her misunderstanding of this important path? I don't know. Maybe she felt I'm um, stagnant. Maybe she felt um, in her own opinion, she was more of you saying you're doing one and the same thing over and over again mm -hmm. don't you get mm -hmm. tired of that i'm like no like a teacher who is teaching one subject at school over and over again and raising generations and generations of people who pass through his hands and go do wonders i take pride in that yeah. and then i then brought the um background to say uh, mbango is a show itself it gives multitudes multitudes of people um, hope and the audacity to want to explore yeah. um, the industry itself. And we got many, you know, young ones in the country today um, who are pursuing careers in film and television mm -hmm. precisely because they watched Mubango and got inspired. And on the other front, we got people who today, uh, Mr. Mashavela, say, I learned this language called Chivenda, Kanaruvenda, Kasho mm -hmm. uh, Mubango. Um, we got people who today say, now I understand what happens in the royal house because Mubango opened the window into that world. And and for some of us, that gives one a sense of, you know, um, pride to say, um, I've done well on this front. Mm. Of course, there will be others who would have, you know, different opinions. That's their opinion. I'm, I'm, <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm, this is what you do. Exactly. And yeah. I take pride in that. You know, you, you say so many important things, but one that stands out is how iconic the show is. Yeah. When 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 Mubango came about uh, many, many years ago now, yeah. over 20 years ago, because yeah. you found this train already in motion. Three yeah. years old or so. You see? Yeah. I remember how that moment stood out so yeah. much that there's a Chivenda show on, on TV because mm -hmm. traditionally there was always Zulu, Kosa, Tswana, Pedi and that, yes. that was enough that was really it, at yeah. some point. And then other languages came about. And and you say it's iconic. Are you referring to that part of its role? Precisely. Um, Mubango broke a number of stereotypes in the South African television. Mm -hmm. um, number one, it brought the most marginalized a tribe in South Africa or in the southern part of the African continent into the television space. That, uh, for me, that is commendable. And number two, it had its, or rather it has its own social cohesion element in a sense that um, it brings people together and people who embodies their different languages mm and cultures, but they coexist in one platform. And I think that's need, that needs to be to be respected. So so uh, it's, it's iconic in a sense that um, when South African television was happening uh, during that time or during apartheid era, um, you were forced to speak one language mm. for you to understand each other on screen or in one scene. Mm. But through Mubango, people would speak their respective languages, yet they're in one scene and understand each other. Mm. And I think that was quite commendable. Mm. But back then, you know, the producers and the directors would argue to mm. say, no, it can't be, it's impossible. They would, they would essentially say, it doesn't happen in real life. Exactly. And yet in real life, it does happen. And now it's happening in yes. real life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where, where a Zulu guy would have a clear conversation with a Tswana and yeah. they would continue. Exactly. Like nothing exactly. is happening. But in the main, it puts emphasis on saying, um, you are okay with your identity mm. and you don't have to be ashamed. Therefore, embrace yourself as you are. Let's talk about the marginalization of the, the Bender nation. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's tricky for me to understand it, yeah, uh, because it's not a lived experience. Yeah, it's an observation, uh, and interesting. And it, it, we were talking about it earlier how how 
uh, vendors and the Tsonga people are able to speak so many languages. Yeah. Uh, and very often has to do with the fact that they are marginalized. So yes. they didn't have a choice. They had to adapt. Uh, describe to me so I, I get it. How marginalized, as stupid as this question sounds, how marginalized uh, is the Chivenda and the Fenda uh, nation? The Fenda people have been marginalized for far too long, um, being called derogatory names, um, being looked upon um, physically and otherwise. And and I think, you know, that was painful. Mm. Um, but at the same time, it has built a character that um, we have become. Um, we have become or no rather known, you know, to be people with strong characters. Um, and it has taught us to, to adapt and devise means of survival in an environment where at times you are not welcomed. Um, now, you, 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 you cast your eyes into the demographic of our country. Mm. It, you'll find the Venda people in every corner of the world, you know, and they are very easy to speak any language. Mm. But it's not that you'll find them in every, you know, corner of the, of, of the country or the world, but wherever they are, they are doing wonders. Mm. They are in charge, mostly, mm. you know, I'd like to believe. And that was not by osmosis. It happened because of the um, fact that they were looking down upon and they had to devise strong, you know, um, characters for them to achieve what that they have achieved thus far. Is there a, a brotherhood? Do you know when, when, when uh, the Jews, for yeah. example, yeah. Uh, in, in their marginalization, yeah. one of the things that came out of their character yeah. is a collaborative a deliberate collaborative effort. Well, I think that's a norm everywhere. Yeah. That um, um, when I'm here and there's a fellow folk from my, you know, um, mm. uh, Mkai. <laughs> Mkai. Uh, region, uh, yeah. we will be, you know, we'll find it upon ourselves to be embracing each other mm -hmm. and forge, you know, a collective way forward. But at the same time. Uh, <laughs> When we are amongst ourselves again, the dynamics are different, of course. and I think I think that's a norm everywhere. Mm -hmm. But um, there is there is a you know um, united front. Uh, at the same time, um, there is such a you know um, a vivid symbiotic relationship between the vendors and the tsongas. Mm -hmm. um, they they understand each other and they sympathize with each other. Is it is it the marginalization again? That yes, comes it play? emanated from that, and yeah. and Chawero is a typical example of that. That you know these two people or two tribes can coexist yeah. without any animosity and tension amongst them. You die. Yeah. Your character dies. I, I nearly, <laughs> you gave me a shock when you say you die. <laughs> <laughs> the you character dies. Mean. Yeah. The character dies. <laughs> yeah. It's a. I, I, you haven't died yet. <laughs> uh, you're still here, thank God. <laughs> but but how how is it experiencing your own death? If you get what I mean, it's overwhelming. It's overwhelming, but at the same time, it's quite um, humbling mm. to see um, the sense of love and appreciation that people have for. Um, you as a person, you know, the craft that you practice. And I, I think at times we underestimate the impact of the work that we do in the <clears throat> entertainment industry. And until such time when something happens, like what, you know, I experienced now, um, you get to say, wow, I didn't think that, you know, the impact was that deep. And to be honest with you, it's it's quite encouraging. It gives one, you know, the zeal and the audacity to say, um, you are on the right trajectory. Yeah. Therefore, you need not to drop the ball. Yeah, yeah. Because the death of a TV character is multifaceted. Yeah, there's there's the the death of the guy of of Gab who would go to work yeah. and work with yeah. colleagues. Yes, and there's the death of a guy who South Africans would watch on TV. Yeah. So it's multi layered. And I imagine the different there's differences in the feeling from from both sides. Yeah. The feeling of of leaving a home because yeah. you know a, a place of work ends up becoming a part of us. Yes. Uh, how has that been? That experience of saying, 
I'm packing now. I'm no longer going to open this 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 change room anymore. Surely that must have you must have shed a tear. <laughs> As Brady, um it's overwhelming mm. and engulfed by an array of emotions. Um this is the place that literally I called home for the longest time. Yeah. And for me at some stage it was not about, you know, me going to work. It, it was more than that. Um, I looked at, you know, the show as, as an institution that was doing um, different things on, you know, different fronts. And, and that would encourage me so much. Um, when, when I meet people on the street um, uh, reflecting on the show and, you know, commenting on some of the scenes that have touched them, uh, commenting on some of the scenes that resonated with their family stories, and that which they were going through at particular time and point, um, meeting um, traditional leaders who would, you know, um, commend and applaud um, uh, the good work that they are seeing, that they resonate with what they do at home. Um, it was very encouraging, yeah. and and that made me feel at home. Um, that that gave me um, courage to an extent that um, I would look forward to going to work. Mm. I would look forward to going into the studio. Um, I'll grab the script and as I peruse it, I'm like, yeah, this one, I'm going to show them. <laughs> you understand? And sometimes you get, you know, the scenes and the storylines that are, you know, uh, not so cool. And you're like, eh, mm. now it's like we're dropping the ball here. Yeah. But um, uh, to be frank with you, it, 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 it was emotional, man. It's not yeah. nice to let go, um, <laughs> regardless of you know the decision that one has taken. Yeah, and yeah. and and the team and and the the goodbyes. Have you had a farewell party? <laughs> I, I said no. I don't want the farewell party. <laughs> you don't want? No, it? I don't want to collapse emotionally. Oh no. Yeah. So 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 my boss was insisting that no, we should have a party. I'm like, I no. think you should. They should do a, the surprise party. No, I don't so, want it. Wangu kame surprise party. <laughs> He must walk in, go high <laughs> at his house. <laughs> at his house, it must be planned. No, I'm, to. <laughs> I'm not good with such things. I, I don't want such things. They don't, I'm, I'm good at doing other people's yeah, parties and yeah. stuff. But you, why, why do you do other people's parties? Let me understand your logic. I, I feel fulfilled in complimenting um, someone's you know, planning, or even if it's a surprise. Because uh, uh, I know he'll feel the same way you feel, or he feels fulfilled. <laughs> yeah, so... It's I, not your thing. It's not your world. No. Guys, eh? At my age, I, I think I only, I only had a party once, and that was it. I'm like, you know, this this can't. It's not you. And na corner foot, it was a surprise. By, there you by go. my girlfriend. I'm there like, no, you go. no. No, <laughs> there's no. another one coming. No, <laughs> then you will be alone with your people there. <laughs> Run away. <laughs> Do you know, I, 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 I tried to read up on you. You have such a tiny digital footprint. Is it deliberate for you not to be all over the place? It's it's important to to be known for the work that you do mm. and it remains that and in the field that i work in it's easier to get carried away and be known for other things as opposed to you know the work that you do mm. and i think the work that we do needs to speak for ourselves these other things are are just collateral and mm. we shouldn't you know put much emphasis on them because everybody have their own things that they are doing or going through at time and point but um, what is important, I think, it's um, doing things that will uplift each other, mm. doing things that will put um, the country forward, um, doing things that would um, uplift my surname mm. as, as, as a mm. person. And as a result, my family will be known for at least one, two, three. Not necessarily the side noise that does not... Um, benefit me or my family mm -hmm. and the country at large so and of course it's you know uh, it's about choices yeah you know it's about choices what you want and how you want it but also even the lifestyle that i go for it's not 
um it's not your all over kind of mm. you know lifestyle i like just rat just rat mara on my own oh rata di rata tsa yeah it's in you know yes. yeah, maybe it's because i don't drink i don't smoke so i found you know comfort in yeah in certain exc- exclusive streets. yeah <laughs> exclusiveness yeah. yeah yeah what what has led to to that personality of one who not khorata di trata and i say this because i was having a conversation with someone about uh, right and wrong yeah raising kids mm-hmm. with the right and wrongness yeah a clear understanding and i said sometimes we re- we re- we expect parents to do something that they can't do yeah because they don't have the skill mm-hmm. no one has taught us there's no manual mm-hmm. of right and wrong mm. uh, and and we hope as parents that you're doing a decent job of it yeah uh, but it'll only be tested once they're out in the streets mm-hmm. and they're living their lives yes and they're making decisions and you're saying yeah what have i done yeah. i wonder if parents even realize their role in the decisions that their kids are making yeah. what has led to that personality about you that the right and wrong seems to be clear and it's not confused in your head you see i think the important thing is the foundation which others would call indoctrination mm. um what is it that has been impressed upon you by your parents and if you have a mind that is formed on good principles mm. and those are family principles you know sound family values um proper you know societal norms um proper education which also include the cultural elements that you know at times we need to uphold and ledge on so dearly so that we become like a whole person so to say so so those things play a pivotal role yeah. in 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 our lives as people and you would be shocked to know that at my age um I'm 43 today I still live by my my father and my mother's indoctrinations mm. and by the way my parents are no longer here but I find more value in that which they were teaching me back then mm-hmm. and as a result I'm also imparting that to my kids mm-hmm. because I found value in it all these other things that I would run for back in the day while my parents were reprimanding me um they are pure nonsense now mm-hmm. yeah G- give me one or two examples of some of your mom yeah specifically yeah your mom's indoctrination yeah it was something that an impression that she left with you and it'll stay there forever she will tell me that you know don't be all over the show yeah so and and i think it was in the 90s where they were you know remember there were some jeans that we used to wear <laughs> with brands <laughs> you know and what, was, it, what was popular <clears throat> then pepe it was pepe yes, you know yes. Hugo Boss. all of that yeah okay. you know yes. uh, beirut and so on oh, wow, yeah I remember. <laughs> yeah so 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 we would put them under you know in our bum <sighs> mm, that was embarrassing and show for our underwear. so yeah and my mom mm. would be like um You are you the first person to put on that <laughs> black underwear <laughs> for you to go around displaying it like that. Yeah. And and that was embarrassing to be reprimanded like that. Hmm. And I think I did it a few times and thereafter I never after she set me down I never. You defaulted to her way ne- of doing never things. again. Yeah. And 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 that and her telling me that I mustn't be all over the street hmm. taught me to to keep to self taught me to be a person of my own and at times you tell me that you know um don't allow friends to define you be a person of your own yeah and it's not easy Mm-mm. it's not easy but there's power in there to be a person of your own and you need to protect that yeah. because believe you me it's very easy to get carried away it's very easy to be comp- competitive mm-hmm. and get swallowed by this and that that is happening before you and 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 I'd like my kids to emulate that so far so far so good um <laughs> so far so good i got two teenagers and the young one who is um eight and 
it's it's amazing how we relate. It's amazing how we converse mm. openly, and I'm loving it. Do you do you see some of your your mother in in in, in some of the things you ask of them? Very much so. Though my kids complain that <laughs> I'm too strict. <laughs> really? And, yeah, they think I'm too rigid. They think I'm too rigid. For example, when you do what? You don't um, want them to do stuff. To go out. Like my daughter will be saying, um. You should allow me to go to the movies alone. I'm like, there's no problem. I'll go drop you off and then I'll go come pick you up. Yeah, she doesn't want that. No, she wants to take the car and drive herself. Oh hell! And I'm like, you don't. Is she a driving age? She's sixteen. She can drive herself. Okay. And I'm like, you don't have a license. If something happens on the road, you are in trouble. Yeah. And now it's gonna be worse because you're my child. (laughs) It's a bigger problem. You know. How did you let it happen? That's the question. What kind of parent are you? No, but <laughs> but but Brady, um, at some stage, you know, um, it's better for her to be taught by the father than to be taught by the world. Mm. So again, it taps into indoctrination, and she mustn't find value in the world. She must find value at home, and 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 that's what I'm trying to inculcate. I guess also, what's the point of tripping and falling? Where else you could have told told her that you're going to trip there? Exactly. Be careful. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, it's likely to exactly. happen. Exactly. But I think I think as time goes, you know, um, they will also develop an informed, if not a sound, perspective around some of the things that you know I'm yeah. trying to impress on them. And Daddy's impression. Yes. What was Daddy's impression on you? My father. Yeah. Ah, I was my father's darling, man. I was my father's darling, and from um, the age of five, my father would be more like, you know, prophesying that, you know, this child will go far, and I see greatness in my son, and that's why I named him Gabriel, which is an archangel, and um, unfortunately, I lost him at the age of 12, Mm. and it has been coming, hey? Mm. Um, But, but, but. There's something phenomenal that my what my father used to teach me. And he would be saying, I don't think I'll be here for the longest time. Mm. Um, but if anything happens, you must take care of the family. Don't run away from the family. Take care of the family. And he will be telling me, you know, we got this and that and that and that. Mm. And if God takes me, you should use this to go to school and to take care of the family. Mm. And that would shock me. Because at the age of 10, 11, I'm like, what is this one talking about? Mm. And when I look back now, um, I, I I find so much value in that. Because if it was just a normal relationship without the teachings, maybe I would have, you know, yeah. been a different person today. But um, it, it really, really helped me and it gave me... Um, a sense of family. It gave me a sense of responsibility. And as a result, of course, I, you know, I, I took over um, as a deputy parent. Mm-hmm. And I, 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 I would believe that I took a decent a, role, a decent you role of taking care of the years. family. Yeah. And I raised my siblings, man. Hmm. I take pride in, in saying, you know, I took them to school and today they have their own families. They are fully yeah. fledged people. And, and when I look back to what my father would say, um, again, I found value, yes. you know, in those teachings. And that's the kind of conversation that I'm having with my eldest son already to say, you know, family is everything and family, that's who you are, yeah. you know. And it's shocking that, you know, um, the current generation does not put much value in the family. Um, I don't know if it's the teachings or just the lifestyle that people are pushing, but I think we can do anything and everything, but we should always find Mm -hmm. um, things that put ourselves in the center of a family. And and it should be everyone's responsibility to to be an adhesive in that family. The lessons you've learned a lot from daddy and mommy. Yeah. Do you sometimes, now you're raising kids, sometimes think that parents delay teaching? And I ask this because you said at the age of 10, 11. Yeah. When you wanted to play out in the streets yeah. with other boys, yeah. uh, whether it's soccer or whatever, daddy wanted to have serious conversations yeah. with you. Do you sometimes find that we delay, we see them as kids for too long yeah. and we delay teaching them important knowledge that you you got so young? Definitely, definitely. And I think... Um, the delay is in us thinking that we'll be here for the longest time. 
And unfortunately, we don't know when we're going to, you know, mm. be called. And the sooner you start with the teachings, the better. Yeah. Um, I, I, I believe in a holistic family, a family that embodies everything that is valuable, everything that is important, because there's power in a person who is open-minded mm. and who a person who is equipped holistically because that person can go and live or survive everywhere. That's true. Or anywhere in the world, yeah. but they would never forget home. Yeah. And those teachings, as I alluded earlier on, they'll carry them for the longest time. Yeah. Yeah. Because because I worry when when parents see them as babies yeah. <laughs> for a long, long time. But at the same time, you should make time and be with your kids individually or collectively and listen to them. Listen what to have what to what they have to say. You'd find so much value and you would learn a lot from them. So if if we perpetuate the stereotype of seeing them as just babies, babies, we would never grow up to understand them and and trust them enough to share profound lessons of life. Yeah. Yeah. It's an important one that let's let's go home. Uh, where were you born? <laughs> <laughs> Only now. <laughs> hey, man. That's how I do things. <laughs> I'm a villager, man. I'm a villager. Yeah. I was born and raised in a village called Chibiriduru. Okay. Um, I'd say in Dinjerere. Uh, yes. That's the research I found. Yeah. <laughs> so, 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 so that's where I was, you know. Yeah. I was born and raised. And what I kind think, of a place is it? <laughs> <laughs> is it still the same when, when you were a kid? No, a lot has changed. Let, let's talk about when you were born. What was yo, what was it? Yo, yo. As as Runa Dark City, man. Jo -jo. Dark City. I think we only had lights in 97, 98. Jeez, that's yes. like 18 years after you were born. Yeah, somewhere there. And and, you know, the lifestyle there was typical rural, you know, looking after livestock, um, plowing fields. Mm -hmm. And those are things that I subscribe to for the longest time. Yeah. And and they've taught me uh, serious life lessons, you know, that, again, I still find, you know, value yeah. in, in them today. And... But life was easy, man. Life was simple. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Life was not complicated. Um, there was no this competition that we are swallowed with here in the big city. Mm. Um, there, you know, um, literally, it takes the village to raise a child. So that that was embodied. That, yeah, that very culture. Very much so. And yeah. you meet somebody's parents. You're meeting your parents. They can, you know, clap you. Mm -hmm. And when you get home, you report it at home. Your parents would want to know <laughs> what did you do? Yes. Yeah, not here. Here you clap my child, he comes running. <laughs> I take you to <laughs> with the a gun. Assault. Ah, uh, the police assault the police will go later. They will start <laughs> by dealing with you. Not with my child. Not there. And 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 as a result, I think for us it has become very unfortunate. Yeah. Um, because we can witness young ones, you know, smoking dacha and doing all sorts of, you know, um unbecoming things. And we just run or shy away from it and say, it's not my child. Mm. And tomorrow the same child is going to break into your house. So, uh, hey, we are losing it, man. Mm. We are losing it. I'm curious about the pecking order in the family. You're the oldest. Yes, I'm the firstborn. Okay. Uh, yeah, but my father, my father was a serious family man. And okay. uh, he, he, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> you can't leave it that loose and <laughs> say anything. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so I was raised in a, I would say, polygamous okay, family. Setup. Yes. My father had like, you know, five wives, but my mom was the last one to go to be married. And I think we only stayed with the rest of the family for like, two, three years when I was born. And thereafter, these other ones were fully fledged and they went into their families and okay. they take their mothers and so on and so on. Let me, let me understand. Yeah. When you say you are first born... Yeah, on my mother. Yeah, I wanted to clarify. Yeah, on my mother. So they're still... They're, but when you were born, 
your obviously your with your mom and dad. Yeah. But it was a separate household. Yes. From yes. the rest of the other household. From the rest of the uh, village. Yes. We call it a village. <laughs> what what can I village. say? What can I say? <laughs> describe, <laughs> describe it so we understand it. <laughs> it was a big family. Yeah. Um, but like I'm saying, Ori, you know, we only stayed, um, I'd say together, you know, for two years. As the whole. As the whole. But these other, you know, older kids were, you know, having, uh. venturing into their own um, households or stands, as we yes. call it in the village. And they would respectively, you know, take their mothers. Mm, and of course. Eventually, yeah. they abdicated, you know, um, the compound and and uh, left. Yeah. And, you, you, you. And I took over the compound you by and default. Your mom stayed. Yeah, we took over the compound by default <laughs> because you were the last to leave. Essentially. Yes. Yes. Describe the setup of a, of that type of politics. Five wives is not yeah. small. Not at all. Not at all. And as a result, it has got its own. Um, negative you know impacts mm. on, on 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 how people relate um on the kids yeah. you know kids inheriting um uh, jealous and uh, things that the mothers will jostle for and try to pass it on through the ah, kids yeah. and i think that has made me to say i wouldn't want to subscribe to this kind of setup I would, mm. you know, prefer to have my own know, born, one man show. Cause yeah. Or, no, sure. Yeah. And also you you it's good on the other side. It has got its own good. But in the main, for me, I think it has got many disadvantages as well. What what is what is the good side? The good side is that, you know, um you have your own relatives and under one umbrella. Mm. And uh Maba Tukshubile, you go as a gang. This, this and then you is. go for a kill. <laughs> but um, again, when amongst yourselves, you still jostle for the attention for the father yeah. and fight for the economy within the <laughs> household. So you're collective against uh, the world. Yeah, but inside you are divided. Yeah. Yes. And uh, as as I said, you know, um, the mothers will also use the kids to fight their own battles. battles that yeah. at times it's only supposed to be the love agenda with the father and whatnot yeah. and and that's not nice it does not reflect nice on the kids as well mm. and at the same time um it, it will always be a norm that you know uh mr mashabella will focus on the particular household and oh. whilst neglecting the rest oh. and and that creates anger you know um amongst the kids you call it a, a norm uh is it is it something that would be seen elsewhere, even not only in your household? Uh, I think it's a global phenomenon. Yeah. <laughs> that, uh, <laughs> I, I've always found it, it fascinating. I, I, and I know that people will take offense to this, but it's a norm that if you've got three cars, there's one car that you... <laughs> <laughs> and won't get attention. <laughs> you know what I mean? And yeah. even when you go to the car wash, there will be that one that you will be the last to be taken to yeah. the car wash. So, yeah. yeah. It's that kind of thing. I would say. Whoa. I would that's, say. that's why I'm looking for the good in it, and <laughs> I and I and I'm looking for the. Let's talk as 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 guys. Yeah, as Majita. Yeah, who are who have five wives. Yes, and then we look for the good in it. Yeah, what is the good in it? I see five problems. What good do you see when? I, I see five <laughs> problems. I can't. I can't. I can't possibly see any good. <laughs> if 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 you've ever had two girlfriends in your life, yeah, you'll realize that it's a lot of work. <laughs> and then maybe not a good idea. In the beginning, it's fine. It's manageable. It's exciting. Yes. And you feel like you are the man. But when problems start springing all over the show, yeah. um, you get overwhelmed, man. And at times, you know, you succumb to the issues. Yeah. And also, to maintain the village, you need to be a serious, hardworking person. And at times, you can be very hardworking and the... Uh, financial aspect of things are not favorable to you. Yeah. So you'll always be the one that carries the heaviest load sure. emotionally and otherwise. And 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 that can weigh you down, man. You're not going to last. No. You're not going to last. <laughs> That's why I said I see five problems. Exactly. At a go. At a go. Not one after the other. And five that comes with kids. Yes. Then it's five multiply. Yeah. Multiply. Uh, so, No. <laughs> no. No. When did you realize that this is probably not a good idea? In the villages, and especially then, um, a few households were subscribing to that kind of living. And you could see that um, 
the number one, the kids are not treated the same. Yeah. You know, uh, there's uh, Poshia's kids who are treated better than Sarah's kids. Mm. There's, you know, um, Sibanibani's kids mm. who are treated like outcasts. Sure. And it's painful on the kids. You know, so at times we look at situations and remove ourselves from the situation. So I think at times we must look at the situation and put ourselves yeah. in the situation. Yeah. Then the meaning will be different. Do you think your dad pulled it off? I think he died. He did. Yeah, yeah I think he did. But um, um, I, I, I so wish he could have lived a few years so that I would ask him hey, relevant he questions. questions. Yes. Uri, hey, dude, how were you managing here? <laughs> But I think at the time it was, it was doable yeah. better than today, because hey, it's tough out there. The financially, was he able to carry it? But on, Michael on never that... panda muna. <laughs> because... <laughs> because we don't know that. <laughs> no, <laughs> and um, my father had you know um, a big crawl, but. No, it was not nice, man. Uh -uh. Nah, nah, I can't subscribe to that. So you, you, when you, when you remember it, yeah, what feeling do you get when you remember that setup? I, of course, I respect them. Yes, that they pulled it off the way they did, though I don't understand um, the core dynamics of what was happening. Yeah, you're too young to, to see. comprehend almost yeah. everything, yeah. you know, but. Um, now that we are here and um, we were raised and we survived that, um, I think it's telling that, you know, he pulled it off. Mm. Yeah. And they didn't seem not to, they didn't seem like they were having issues. Yeah, that, that the house didn't burn. <laughs> no, no, no. But when I talk to uh, my, um, uh, I'll say Mam Kolo, mm. uh, now they say no. <laughs> They'll tell you the stories. This happened. They'll this give happened. you a different version. Yeah, I'm like, hey, and then how did you guys survive? No, your father was very strict. Mm. And and at times okay. he would sanction you, take you back to your family where you come from. And then the family would have to be brought to be brought in to, you know, apologize for you and yeah. to be brought back again. To As be a wife. Yeah, to be incorporated into the family. I'm like, no, but that was cumbersome and heavy. <laughs> and I say, no, but you know, we would um go into the fields and do the plowing and I'm like, no. It's too much work. No, man. Yeah, too, much too much administration. Too yeah, too that, much, that, too that's much. why I ask a, a 10 year old, yeah. 12 year old, if your memory of it is is uh, is pleasant or yeah. or what what wha what is it about that the memory of that time um, for now for me I, I i don't see the negative aspects because mm. um the only thing that i could relate to is the jostling of you know of attention. the attention yeah. and you know mothers trying to push the agenda of their kids to be forefront or prioritized and and, sure. and but in the main um I don't remember, you know, uh, world wars happening mm. in the compound now. So you don't remember not liking it? Not really, not yeah. really. You just, I just remember, you know, too many people. <laughs> <laughs> too many people in the house. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, I would say that. Did you and do you still get along with the other siblings? No, very much so. Uh, very yeah. much so, yeah. Um, we, we, we are very, you know, close-knitted um, yeah. family. And and we embrace each other. Is it big? Yeah. Many people. Uh, not not really. Um, I think we. I'd say sixteen. Yeah. That's of a course, lot. others have you know gone to heaven, but yeah. That's a lot still. <laughs> but, but I get nagit la liba naka umu la liba na Yeah. Then ranawa. By that standard, sixteen is a lot. You can imagine yourself my having man. six sixteen children. My man. And uh, you know, of course, in 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 my in my father's compound. <laughs> We were the smaller. Other, you were the other smallest family. family. Yeah, other family. And you were how many? <laughs> um, 16 plus mothers. Yeah, your family was yeah. the smallest. How many were you? I, I would say 16 plus four, five mothers. Yes. So it would be 20-something. But it, other other families, uh, come on. <laughs> there were many. Uh, yeah, come on. I can't, just that I can't mention names. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> other, you would find, you know, we have, we have a team in the village. You find, you know, um, the team dominated by a particular family. <laughs> <laughs> because there are just many of them. But I think people are shying away from that, you know, aspect of being uh, yeah. lately. And everybody's focusing into their own small, you know, 
little nyana thing. It's not yeah. easy. Yeah, it's the the economy is not yeah, nice. Yeah, it's not yeah. easy. How many siblings do you have? Um, I'm the first born, and then I got um, um, five. Okay. That come and you call me. that small. <laughs> ah, that's small. <laughs> Com- hey, man, man. I'm from the village, man. Yeah. <laughs> You're talking things that are more No. No. So, 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 we and we are done. Exactly. Yeah. So, so already I got three and I'm saying I'm done. You know, yeah, no, no plans. No, this thing, these people are too expensive. Yeah, that's so true. Yeah, eh? these things are too expensive, man. Jeez. So. Now, tell me the, the growing up with ambitions to do bigger. Were you seeing your world? Yeah as the end of the world because it's easy for the mind yeah to only see the, the the walls of the village so so when you're young and, and growing up you cast your eyes onto the mountains that then becomes your horizons and those mountains becomes um the end of your world mm. and frankly speaking um i never thought that um the journey will be this long and it might you know and up sending me to this part of the world and i'm quite grateful you know to the creator that you know the journey turned out to be um this colorful but um as a young man i would i would dream mm. i would dream and if there's one thing that i wanted to be i wanted to be a news reader you know with all my heart and i would listen to the radio get so mesmerized and really? And 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 practice that which I was listening, man. What was it then? Mm. Uh, R- uh, Radio Venda, Radio Toyando. Yes, yeah, yes. so there were two when we were growing up, and yeah. the later on they were merged to form Parapara, Parapara, Parapara FM. Yes. Yeah, and incorporated into the public broadcast. So you would listen to Glenn Lewis because he's from one of the two. Yeah, I mean, I think he was Radio in medium with Radio Toyando then. Yes, yeah, okay. yeah, oh, Glenn Lewis, um, Lloyd Nedo. Nedo, yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that was an era, eh? Yes, and hey, those guys. <laughs> were flying man what was it about <clears throat> it that fascinated you um how they would go about everything and the knowledge um they would you know showcase when they were presenting yeah. and how they would like you know uh, portray the picture of whatever that they were th- seeing or talking mm. about and as, as 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 a you know village boy you can only portray your own pictures in mind, yeah. you know. Based on the little you know. knowledge that you have, yes. you know. And it was so fascinating. It was so fascinating. Jeez. Yeah. Were you then seeing life beyond the mountains? Uh, not yet. Not yet. Mm. Only later, you know, in my life, I then, you know, starting to, you know, develop mm. uh, different understanding and, you know, um, seeing things differently, but also having electricity, I think it it had brought <laughs> your life. <laughs> Yo, because now we could start going to you know other households to watch television and like oh okay this you is know? what's happening yeah and at that time we were very old men we we're very old yeah we were you were teenagers already, already in your eighteen yeah your teens, yeah yes. we we're teenagers already and old teenagers yes. yeah. So it's important to have exposure. Yeah. It's important for adults or those who have exposure to create that avenue for for the young ones because it helps them, you know, to fast track their journey yeah. and understanding. Before then, because yeah. I can't imagine that. Yeah. Uh, I I was raised with electricity. Yes. Well, we don't have it now, <laughs> but <clears throat> but we did. Let me drink water. <laughs> We did then, <laughs> even though apartheid government would switch it off once in a while. Yeah, <laughs> I was raised with with electricity. I, I remember when TV was 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 introduced in my household yeah. as a child, but I was much much younger than than you then. Yeah. Uh, what what type of dreams do you have as a child yeah. that is not exposed? What were you seeing in your future before electricity? Before electricity, there there wasn't much that you can dream of. Mm. You know, um, you would cast your eyes onto the horizon and think of being a news reader, like I said, and yes. only for radio, confined to the radio. Because that's what because that's what is at your disposal. Yeah. Um, being a teacher, a policeman, a doctor, you know, that you yeah. know, just, maybe. Yeah, no, that <laughs> then miracle would have happened. Okay. You know, you'd also look out in your surrounding and say, if I want to pursue that, who would take me through that? You know, because mm. it's a long process and expensive procedure as well. So so yeah, I think I think those, yeah. you know, I, I wanted to be um a journalist so much or 
Even if I could just pass grade twelve and be a policeman, it will be fine. What? Yeah, it will be that fine. That was. Then I can fend for my family. <laughs> <laughs> so such dreams made sense. They were they were very valid. Yes, they were very valid because you could validate them by picking up references. That's it in your surroundings. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, it was it was normal. It was normal because as a child, you know, you everything you you balance it with money. Mm -hmm. Or if ever I want, were to want this or demand this, who would, you know, provide? Covetous, yes. Yeah. And and you look at immediately your surroundings. Yeah. And then that's that limiting um The, 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 the size dreams. of the dream. Yeah. But um, I'm, I'm glad that, you know, um, the current generations, um, they are not that limited, so yeah. to say. Um, there are a number of avenues that one can explore to realize their dreams. Do you know, I've learned over, over these type of conversations that sometimes exposing your kids yeah to your financial challenges yeah. is is to their detriment yeah because they, well, i remember a conversation i had with kenny kenny Nkosi actually yeah he said they mustn't know i'm broke yeah <laughs> because they'll it'll limit their thinking yeah they must always think anything is possible mm -hmm. so what do you say to a statement like that in relation to how you were raised um, I think it's important to be to be fair and honest with your kids. Yeah. To say, here we are, and this is what we can afford. Mm. So that even their demands are not, you know, um, that of a movie. Mm, they're within reach. Yeah, they're within yeah. reach and they know and understand um, the family dynamics yeah. monetarily. And I think that's one thing that helped me to not to exert pressure on my mother um, to an extent that, you know, if at school we're having a school trip, I won't even bother her because I know I'll be milking a dry cow mm -hmm. and she will only be shocked with how you're not going to school today. No, mommy, um, today mm -hmm. we go, the, the other kids are going to a school trip. And then mm -hmm. why didn't you say, I'm like, ah, no, I didn't want to bother you. And yes. uh, in my in my mind, I'm like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have it. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the use of me hoeing it to you, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, I think it's important yeah. to have, you know, um, that kind of conversation. Not only that it will limit them in terms mm -hmm. of making demands, but also it will give you an opportunity to have what I call financial education. Mm -hmm. Because as parents, we need to... We need to have that conversation with our kids and teach them about, you know, finances, mm. um, how to save and how to, you know, use money. How to earn money. Exactly. Because yeah. money is it's an important part of, of our life today. And mm. if we're not careful around it, we'll find ourselves in trouble. Yeah. We'll find ourselves in trouble. How much education were you exposed to in that environment? Um, You know, there were... People in the village who were going to universities, the University of Venda, and they will come back and looking different compared to how they left. <laughs> like what? Like, you know, you you, you you have guys who went to University of Venda. When they come back, they were, you know, um, doing what we call practicals as teachers. Mm. And that would encourage us greatly, you know. Um, at the same time, you know, you have guys who go to colleges and one, two, three, you hear that they are working somewhere mm. like, wow. So this thing really, really pays. It's possible. And, and, and we will start hoping, mm. you know, at high school to say, you know, I can see that, you know, things are not looking good, but if I could, yeah. you know, if I could go this far, you know, maybe something, um, serious will come forth. Did something serious come for? Look at me, man. I'm I'm in your studio. That says a lot. <laughs> Thinking about then. <laughs> yeah, you know. And I, I think I think I was one of the unfortunate of the fortunate one, rather. Yeah. Um, to say, um, I started doing drama while I was still in high school. Uh, Mr. Kezonesh Tangani, who is my mentor, and who was also um a teacher in our high school. Mm. Um, I think he left. Uh. He became a lecturer at the University of Venda, hmm. but he came back to teach us drama mm -hmm. um, after, you know, school hours. And it's an opportunity that we appreciated and some of us grabbed with, you know, both hands. And I was very lucky that I got casted whilst I was still in high school. Yeah. You you have a, a relatively build, big build. Yeah. Uh, you could have done anything. Yeah. You can easily walk into a, a soccer match and be a goalkeeper and yeah. intimidate other players. Yeah. Uh, what led to drama? Because 
<laughs> I tried soccer and, you know, um, you don't have the legs. I don't have the skills. <laughs> and also, um, I think I was limited for soccer because I spent most of my time looking after my parents, you know, livestock okay. and, and, and being in the fields as well. So that took most of my time out of the streets. And uh, you go to soccer, they beat you. <laughs> you go look after the livestock they appreciate you they even carry you to give you money to carry when you go to school yeah, yeah, yeah. so so there were those you had to choose yeah, yeah. so i'd rather do this that will benefit me yeah. and and put me in good books you know with them parents and yeah i think but i was good at you know you know volleyballer but okay. in the village so then you and, had options yeah that's why i'm wondering if there were enough options yeah but in the village you know we didn't have you know um an array of you know um sporting you know activities mm, yeah. to, to tap into it was mostly soccer volleyball and and netball for ladies so yeah so it was limiting as and opposed to here where my kids could play rugby it could be anything and they they could do anything, anything that they want yeah. you know and drama came along drama came along and you know because i was good at debate in the class lcm you know like yeah here i am i'll show them flames <laughs> and i grabbed it with you know both hands and and I was the favorite in the group uh, because I was, you know, um, I was I was doing my thing. And mm, mm. and when the opportunity to go do the audition, unfortunately, he took two people that he trusted, and I was one of those two. And both of us were taken mm. in that audition. Unfortunately, the other lady couldn't continue because of other. Um, yeah. a responsibility. I think she had a child already and her oh. mother refused to look after the child. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, no. Uh, but she regretted, man. Going I forward, imagine yo, that. heck, you know, Gabriel, I feel like my mother robbed me. Oh, so you've had a conversation. Yeah, lots and lots of those. Like, you look at where you are now, you know, I'll be alongside you, but, you know, oh, no. it is what it is. What a big loss. Uh, imagine, imagine, imagine. <laughs> yeah, so so that's what happened, my brother. Do you know, I'm, I'm, I'm curious about the, the luck, if luck is a word you would use, yeah. of drama being there. in Because yeah. in, it, 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 there are people who came before you who didn't have it. Yeah. And there are probably those who came after you who didn't have it, and it happened to fall right on your lap when yeah. you were when you were in high school. Yeah. When you reflect back to that time, what 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 comes to your mind, or you were lucky, or it was just your time? So the un universe has got its own language. Yeah. And its timeline it's known by itself. So, and this is what Brakaiser says, my mentor. He says, "I feel I was assigned just to come and discover you." Yeah. And thereafter my part is done. That's why I ask it this yeah, way. Yeah. That's what he says. Yeah. And and I'm forced to, you know, um surrender <laughs> to that. Yeah. So um, yeah, it is what it is, my brother. Cuz it, it was, is what it is. Cuz when you tell it now, yeah. It sounds like you could have easily missed it. Definitely. Definitely. Um uh, there were so many things that were discouraging at the time, especially when we were still, you know, doing the rehearsals and stuff. And, mm. you know, um, those who were playing soccer will be going to, you know, their soccer games and will be going to rehearse at school. And they'll be like, what are you doing? You guys are wasting time, man. <laughs> Who's going to come here? There's no television that will ever come here. I mean, sure. we don't even have, you know, theater facilities where you're going to showcase your talent. Mm. Come, let's go to soccer. And I'm like, I can't go to soccer to cheer you up playing. <laughs> you know, here... There's no career for, for yeah. people who are cheering. <laughs> but, but then there was a shift in how people looked at us. Um, because at the time we would go to... There was a festival that used to happen annually at the University of Venda, which was Arts and Culture Festival. Mm. And we'll practice the whole year just to go showcase um, in September. <laughs> For how long? <laughs> how long on stage? <laughs> I think it was 30 to 45 minutes. <laughs> and you'll, you'll do it for the whole year. Yeah, but we'll practice the whole year. Um, Jeez, talk about um, commitment. And But we enjoyed it. Mm. Um, it kept us away from the street. It taught us how to read and how to, you know, uh, speak, you know, the mm. language. Uh, and... It gave us a perspective about life and yeah. and 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 the world in general because Mr. Kezo Nishtangani is a very versatile man, and he does not only or rather he was not only teaching us drama, mm -hmm. but he will also tap into 
um, our school work. How are you doing? How is it going? Oh. Um, how can I help? Can I talk to your teachers? And I, for one, he did that for me, that he would talk to the teachers and help with some of the issues that I had at the time. Yeah. And and I'm very grateful for, 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 for a person that he is mm. and how he embraced me as his own child. And here I am, man. Here I am. Wait, I'm not wait. only his pride. I'm the pride of, you know, yeah. the nation. Are you were you a difficult student or not what were some of your challenges? <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Uh, not really <laughs> that <means> <laughs> uh, not not really that you know, or I was a, a difficult person. But I think I was staying like 10, 15 minutes away from, from school. Yeah. And yeah. To avoid going to school carrying one container with Moro every day, I would opt to go home, you know. Oh, during uh, break. During break, yes. just, you know, like I'll have my lunch in yeah. my corner and then I'll go back to school. Okay. So sometimes you go back, the class has commenced already and now you have issues with the teacher. Oh, no. Yeah. Or he comes after. You know what I mean? After so, break. Yes. yes. Sometimes... Um, it's Tuesday, and then mm. on Wednesday we have a dipping track. Now I must take the kettle to the dipping oh, track in no. the morning. So break time, I go to the mountain to fetch the kettle. And now you can't come back. And I can't come back to school. Now that means I miss all the cl three classes after break Jeez. and the studies. So those are the challenges. And those were some of the challenges. And then Wednesday, in the morning, my mom is at work. And here I am. So I must take the the, the, kettle, the kettle to the dipping track. Uh. And thereafter, I must send them to the mountain. So yes, it was complicated. What What is a dipping track to a Pretoria boy like me? A dipping never track. Handled kettle. <laughs> and there's a profound lesson that one can learn from a dipping track. Yeah. So a dipping track is, uh, you know, the people who are in agriculture, they do this. Um, passage like I see that yeah, yeah the passage like okay. Okay, and I then they, they, they dig the, a hole the kettle, and then they put water yes. but in that water they put chemical for for, for all for, sorts of uh, any disease the and, ticks yes, that and might be that. bugging the cow and not the kettle and whatnot got you and um, also it's a way of um, the agriculture to count how many kettle Mr Mashabella has okay and also mark them. Through oh, yes, them they have that. so that we don't steal from each other. Yeah. And if a kettle is lost, then we can know this is, you know, the wrong uh, place. The wrong place. Yeah. And so on and so on. What so, is the lesson that, that you're thinking of? So so back in the day when we were taking them to the dipping track, I, I didn't understand what was that all about. Mm -hmm. So so the main process was for them to go into the water, mm -hmm. get the chemical into their body, and um get rid of the ticks so to say mm. and that process has grown to be very profound for me that um, from time to time we need to find avenues that will help us get rid of the parasites that we collect along the journey of life wow. and and I've grown to appreciate that process and it's because the cattle themselves could not think for themselves mm -hmm. <laughs> had to, had to, help to do them. that yeah. yeah but also the marking uh, was phenomenal in that um it was difficult to steal somebody's cow mm. uh and and that's the 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 the, the one challenge that farmers uh, mm. or small holding farmers have yeah. in certain parts of our of our country um so that mark is very significant yeah. and 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 it's a protective measure so to say mm. yeah how would you translate that lesson of the mark in particular to everyday life um you need to know who you are and you need to know where you belong mm. and that can tap into your spiritual being and the family which family are you Mm. Um, how do you keep within the family, you know, and, 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 and especially for fathers or men in particular that, you know, we need to protect ourselves. We need to, we need to fight for that, which is ours, mm. meaning we need to take responsibility in the main. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a huge responsibility considering the challenges that men have today. It's shocking, uh, Brady in a sense, Yaurini. We're living in a society where people are more educated than ever before. People mm -hmm. have more exposure than ever before, but their responsibility or behavior 
it's quite the opposite and i ask myself why you you make you wonder if education maybe the type of education we're getting <laughs> because 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 if you had to compare using your example our education now and the zero education of those that that raised us yeah but yet their approach to life seemed like it was far better than ours yes and that then ties back to the element that we spoke about earlier and in, the indoctrination mm. what what are you instilling upon yeah. your children so important and when they have grown or become adults they will live by those indoctrination yeah so so the current gang they don't have that foundation So when when they have made it made it in life they are on their own and they find power in being on their own because they saw their fathers being on their own or neglecting yes. their offspring then it then it carries on then it 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 goes on perpetually you realize that's where we are now unfortunately yeah and unfortunately it, it keeps duplicating dude itself. you'll be shocked that there's somebody who's uh, older than you mm. who is subscribing to that now and he's not moved He's still angry that his then girlfriend did one, two, three, and he's still angry at that. And uh, and as a result, he has neglected the child. And the child is being punished, unfortunately. But it never bothers to think what could be happening in the child's mind mm. on a daily basis. Yeah, <laughs> you're making us think as far as, as potential fathers. I'm not a father yet. Uh, God hasn't blessed me <clears throat> with, with okay. children yet. But <clears throat> but yeah, it's food, food for thought. <laughs> It is actually yeah. it's a it's a it's a tricky one this because it's a common conversation yes. amongst in this in this room. Yeah. Uh this problem that men don't always take responsibility completely. Yeah. They do it uh, because of all sorts of anger and you, yeah. you gave an example that no one has given so clearly. What what did the girlfriend? Yeah. Who cheated on her or whatever or whatever the reason may be. Whatever the reason is. Yeah. And now the child suffers yeah. and that child is likely to make another child suffer and subscribe to the same way of living and because that's what the child knows they are likely those who would have an encounter with um Mr. Mashabela and have a meaningful conversation mm. that would then serve as a turning point in his outlook yeah. of life uh, like is that young boy who watches a movie uh, a movie like John Q and say i want to be that father a better father yeah i want to be a good father to my kids yeah. and believe you me i always say it does not happen by osmosis it needs mm. men who are sober men who are driven by purpose to do what is necessarily needed it's not nice to own up no but it's a good thing sure it's a and you put it so simply it's not nice to own up yeah. but yet it's a necessary uh, medicine Indeed. that you have to take it i baba so you yes. must take it yes and it's a medicine that can can give you so much positive yeah. things going forward. Yeah. Yeah. And who knows you're neglecting a potential doctor. Yeah. A potential President savior of, of your family. Oh boy. All right, enough about that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be emotional, man. <laughs> <laughs> your your career, you talk about the audition. Yeah. This audition is it the big audition? The audition. The audition. Yeah. Sheer man, you were found the very you, first audition, my man. You were found when you were wet behind your ears, like proper. I was, well, but it's a good thing that I was still innocent. Yes. <laughs> yeah. How did it come along? You say it's 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 uh, the the teacher that introduced that said they are here. Yeah. They could have gone anywhere in Venda. Exactly. Exactly. They could have. He could have gone for you know um, the students who were at the University of Venda who were more saturated than ours he could have gone to a fully fledged teacher who was working somewhere else mm. who had you know a broader and if not a deep understanding mm. or Jeez. a radio presenter yes you, you get what i mean because that then that was the the, the the route besides the producers don't want people who would waste their time True. yeah so yeah. if you're getting you know a rural somebody like gabriel whom you still need to teach the camera and the movements thereof you don't look at the camera like this mm, you You're wasting your time and time you, is you, money you act the scene not the camera and you still got it yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you would never know yeah you would never know 
but I'm grateful. They, they did they come through to the school or they send no, it they to, were, to they bring? No, they were they were filming already. Okay. Um, but this was you know more like in the early days of the shoot uh, mm. they were stationed at um, Venda Sun which is now Coroni Hotel yeah and yeah I was you know I, I was at the hotel for the first time man looking around seeing the big guns yo mm. Maralo oh so you Makalo recognize you reco oh, like, kinda, then you had TV yeah so you recognize yes. these characters yeah. no I, we didn't have TV even when I started appearing on TV I go to the neighbors yes that's, and watch well TV. I guess that's yeah, what I mean. was, you yes. know I had the exposure so to say yes. yeah you're right yeah I'm like wow so this is it I was scared, I was scared, man. <laughs> I was scared, but excited, like, wow. I didn't even have a, we didn't have camera phones at the time. So no. when you go back in the village and say, guys, ah, live, say you're live. live. I'm like, ah, you are lying. I mean, no, but they knew what we were capable of. Okay. Yeah, okay. because they had grown to respect us as a group because we were doing things, we were performing, you know, in the village, in parties, mm. uh, churches and whatnot. And, and they whatnot. knew the talent. And they knew what we were capable of. No, we were getting standing ovation, man. Jeez. Joke aside, we were killing it. Were you Were you a natural? Of course, of course. But you can see. <laughs> well, I have to go back. <laughs> to, maybe, maybe, they, maybe you needed extra training. No! Maybe they said, Gabriel... Where am I after class? Well, you need no, extra lessons. <laughs> no, that, that man, you know, taught us very well. And and it took time, but we got it. Yeah. And upon marrying it, we ran with it. Yeah. Yeah, we ran with it. Even in his absence, we would do wonders. And he would hear the rumor, hey, there was a rally here. And then your kids <laughs> performed. Wow. Wow. You're doing well. well You're done. doing well. And that encouraged us. Yes, you know, carry that, on. that encouraged us. And... Um, from time to time, when we had trips, you know, to go to the University of Venda, um, people volunteered to collect for us to say, no, Brakeza, you don't have to suffer on your own. We see the value of what you're doing and we want to rally behind this. Incredible. And, and they took pride in us. Tell me about the day of the audition. Yo, the day of the audition. I get there, those guys were speaking Sisutu and Tate Nukura Mabula. Uh, Pramakalom Fuking, and another white guy, the late um, Vesco Merjan, mm. uh, was speaking proper English, man. <laughs> I was so frightened. <laughs> I was so frightened. They gave me the script, and then I prepared the script in English. And when the time for the audition came, and they're like, no, 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 do it in Veneg. Are you, will you be able to translate? Mm. I like yes, I can do it, mm. and we switch just like that. Is it the training coming into play? Yes, here? and yeah. and they were quite shocked. Dude. How when did you translate? Because you've it's been written, doing it in English, and yeah. it's written in English. There's no Venec translation, like here while we're reading. Like wow, so you you're the right people to work with. So if yeah. in case we get to change the scene or add another scene, you could catch it like that. Do you know it, it's a it's something that I saw. Not all of poem. Yeah. The Dude. newsreader. Yeah, I saw yeah. her do that. Yeah. I had her on my radio show once and we gave her a, a, and I always knew this because we record voices in the, yeah. st in the studio. And I've always known that people who are really sharp yeah. with language, yes. you give them an English script, yeah. they would read it in Venda. Yeah. And that has always been And such the proper Venda that is. Yes. Yeah. Has always been such a fascination for me. Like, there's not even a single vendor word yes. on these things and, yeah. and they're reading they're reading they're reading Arevona, sometimes you're thrown with a new story yeah that is just that's just broke broke out yeah and, and it's in English because they have to send it to all everyone yes and you have it yeah yeah and the audience mustn't see that you are reading you are, and translating. translating at they the are same not interested time. in that. How they don't know that you just got that. All you no, need to do is to present it with precision and that's it. So it's it's a skill that you need to learn. Yeah. It's a skill that you need to continuously um strive to improve mm. on. Yeah. Mm. And you were you had to bring that game very early on in I your life. I needed that thing so badly. That's amazing. Because I knew that it would be a turning point of my life and it will change my family setup. Jeez. And and it did exactly that. It mm. did exactly that. Um, so now the audition is gone. They say, come tomorrow. Hey man, another problem now. The <laughs> teachers are fighting me already. Now I'm forced oh, to. Because I was still doing grade 12 at the you, time. You can't go to school. Ish. <laughs> 
even though you're holding your head now, I can see this young boy <laughs> battling and with this decision. That was me being driven home by Brakeza. Uh. And now I'm scared to ask him, Manuri, dude, Pella, coming here will be a challenge now. Mm. <laughs> I can't do this tomorrow. <laughs> and now I don't want to bother this man. <laughs> what did you end up doing? So I went home when I got, because I, I think we went there around seven because they were shooting uh, location and then, they, okay. so we had to meet them after the, the, their shoot. And I got home, it's around 10. Now I must wake up the old woman. Oh, it's it, it's at night now. You yes. Yeah. And maybe she doesn't even have money. So there, there comes that problem. Yeah. You remember that trip? Yes. Problem you spoke about. Yes. Where you can't ask her for money Ash. for a trip because you know she you doesn't have You know what I mean? It. But this one is more compelling now and it's it's instant. I'm a, I, I, I must make a plan before I sleep. Yes. So, <laughs> hey, the mamzo. Uh. So I went there and then they're saying I must come tomorrow. You must come tomorrow. And then, so Ash, I need money for transport. To oh. heaven. Like, <laughs> okay. And Angai... Mm. I think it was 20 rand or so. Yeah. And then two days, that 20 rand is gone. I think transport was like, taxi was six rand then. Okay. And Jeez. then two days. It's gone. It's gone. I must go back. Now I know we're going to fight now. <laughs> <laughs> it's you again. <laughs> Ash. And she doesn't understand that, you know, um, I will be paid. Yeah. Yeah. Because now it's still She thinks like... it's the same thing that I've been doing. That's it. Yeah. So, Ash. I were you aware you were going to get paid? Oh yes, at this stage? yes. Okay. Yeah, those guys were 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 unequivocal about it. This is what we're doing, and and Vesco was the breaking one. Mm. This is what we're doing, and then you're gonna have so much money, young man. Um, <laughs> 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 you could already see. It. Yeah, and at that time, and indeed, you know, I got so much money. Mm. So so the money I got per call was more like double my mother's salary because my mother was. Um, a domestic worker. Uh, uh. Just a call. Double her salary. Sure. Like one, like one, one visit to One my call, my man. Would give you enough. And I think I ended up having like 12 calls. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> I was the man. <laughs> you could have you taken a wife. Yo! I, no, no, no. That was a no-go area. <laughs> Yeah, oh, that was a no-go area. Wow, man. That's yeah. amazing. That's a, so, that's a big deal in the family. Yeah. So the next encounter, she says, no, I don't have money anymore, but I'll make a plan for you. She went to the, the neighbor and got, I think it was 50 bucks. Yeah. Yeah. That sustained me. And For those many calls. Yeah. So after I had relayed to her that, you know, um, I'll be paid. And then she started devising means of, you know. Yeah. And then when I got paid and... Ah, as a car and <laughs> yeah. I hope you gave her money back. Oh, definitely, definitely. <laughs> no, I was a, I was a very loyal child to my mother. That's why I said earlier on that I became the co-parent. Yeah. Uh, and because of what my father told, said to me when he said, you know, you must look after the family, and yeah. um, you and your mother must never move out of here. You must mm. remain here, but you must look after the family. Oh. And that always resonates in my mind. Uh, yeah. His words would you know, be echoed continually. Do you know, it's a, it's yours is, is such an interesting one because there are people who go through hectic drama school yeah. and this and yeah. that yeah. and wait years for their first call. Yeah. And boom, your career starts high. Yeah. The 12 calls, are you now aware that this is a job? Because school is suffering. Yeah. What happens there? School is suffering. And I told my friend, dude, Tell the principal that I won't be coming to school, but don't only tell the principal. Tell this particular teacher. Mm. Yeah. So Mr. Mabada will understand what I'm talking about, why, and he, he will what, be able to defend. The principal was not gonna take it. What was what was so special about about M Mr. That Mabada teacher? would he he him and Kaiser away from the the village. Okay. The principal was from another village, mm. but Mr. Mabada was vested in the dynamics of what was happening yeah. and the vision of the village, so to say. And he understood my family situation. Mm. Yeah. So so I knew that he will come to my rescue. And of course, it happened like that. When I got <laughs> back to school, the principal was like, hey, where were you all along? 
we've been looking for you here. You think metric is matras, not here. <laughs> <laughs> so then I had to rope in uh, Mr. Mabada because I knew that he will defend for me. Yeah. And, you know, it, it was... And he did. Yeah, and he did. And he said he's going to put our school in the map and the village in the map, so why not? And boom, when the show started chasing... The principal was the one to start celebrating and putting me in front of the, <laughs> of course. the school to yes. say, we have a star in our midst. Amazing. Yeah. And because yeah. in, in an environment like that, you're probably the first person to be on TV. Precisely. Precisely. And as a result, you then become um, the hope for the school and the entire community as well. And 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 I think it has been it has been a blessing, not only for my family, but yeah. for the whole, you know, community. Yeah. Yeah. What was the the role, the first call? What were you? Ex what what character were you playing? The, sa the same character. The same ca yeah. Did it come in immediately as a? Because this character, is... dude, straight away, <laughs> straight away. I don't but know then, what Brakes and Bradi Braduma were thinking. were thinking, but straight away. And mind you, the character that I was given was being portrayed by somebody and that person was there, but they had to replace him. Oh. Because what happened at the audition, um, the producer and the, the director and the first assistant director, mm. uh, Mr. Makalo, who was playing Tate Tsepon Mvango, were like, no, man. Actually, let's put this guy as a Zindini. You know, mm. his body structure is convincing, the yeah. voice. And you saw how he did that scene and how he translated it into Venek. This is the guy to go for. Cher. Imagine and the other guy. At that time, I'm like... <laughs> and they're saying these things in my in my presence. I'm like, please, guys, please. Yeah, let yeah, it happen. Please. But, but were you able to understand the scale of this thing that you're about to embark in at that uh, at that small age? Not really. I, but I wanted that breakthrough so okay. badly. So it didn't badly. matter what it was. The the, the, the the longevity thereof didn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. It's just the, give me this the breakthrough, yeah, yeah, the breakthrough. And mind you, it it was after we had seen Yizo Yizo and what it did um, to 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 the actors at the time yeah. and how they became, you know, the talk of town, mm -hmm. and 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 being, you know, a television actor in the village at that time was you know, was larger than life, man. <laughs> larger than life everywhere. Uh, I'm telling you. Jeez. I don't know about everywhere. I know no. about the village where I come from. <laughs> <laughs> I can see me for well, well, I can, I can, I can, te I can tell you. Who did we have on TV when we were growing up in yeah. Mamelodi? And like Eddie Rebani was the star on TV for us. At the time, yeah. When we were growing up. Trust me, it was just yeah. as big as it is now. Ash. And there was Hope Zinde. Uh, who became a, a, a board member of SABC much later on. Much later, she yeah. also had a, a role a on, TV on TV of some sort. We yeah. don't know what it is. There were a few of them. We understood. And as, as township boys, yeah. fame is still is far. And yet it seems so close. Yes. yes. <laughs> and yet imagine to you yeah. in the village, it, it was even further. Yes. But yet you were able to achieve it. Mm. Like the guys bo uh, who else was go go Kasi who was uh, uh Philip Taban used to play oh, guitar. Oh okay. Oh no, we thought they the were the Malombo guy. Oh no, but Don like our own, yeah. But Don like we thought they were superstars. Oh, Bradon. Bradon's from Mummy Lodi as okay. well. Okay. We thought they were superstars. Yes. So that's why it So you had people to look up to on, on this fraternity. Yeah, but 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 they were already gone in inverted. Far rooms, away, yes. Us. Yes. They were they were already inside that box. Okay. And that box was just too far. Ah, but it was too close, man. <laughs> Compared to us. Well, no, of course. Uh, more than 480 <laughs> kilometers away. <laughs> of course. But for it's... us, it was at least 70, 80 kilometers. And yeah. that's still relatively but far. But you could hope closely, man. I agree. But we didn't. <laughs> I must mm. admit, we did not. Because mm. you know how it is. And, and it's probably the same with you. At some point, you had to leave. Yeah. You know, you had yeah. to... Go and leave them behind. Yes. And yes. now you're merely a reference. <laughs> you're not a physical. I'm no longer at that no. close proximity. Once in a while. Once in a while, I'm home. there. Yes, to visit. Yes. And you. No, and you're right. You get all the attention. You don't have time to attend to that kid anymore. That dreams of this life as well. And who can possibly do it? And who's probably even more talented than you? Than are. me. Yes. But you won't get a chance to encourage him. That's the challenge. But I, I still make time for the young ones. Um, yeah. And, you know, even my own old schools, um, both the primary and the high school, I visit them from time to time time yeah. sometimes with this and that that i can you know um hand over that would encourage the next child because it's important not Absolutely. to forget where we come from it's important to to plant that seed of hope mm. to say to the young ones tomorrow is coming 
Mm. And tomorrow might be better than today if you do what is necessarily needed. That's true. But um, it's a pity that from time to time we get to forget ourselves and we mustn't. We must always find it in ourselves. It's to, that stamp on the cow. Yeah, to remind each other yeah. of our bigger responsibility. Where we're from. Yeah. You you get the job. That discussion yeah. becomes a reality. <laughs> <laughs> Not only that. So now we're shooting. I'm like, ah, this guy's is me for real. So what if they get back to job back and then they remove They change me? their mind. Yeah, what if oh. <laughs> they record all these things and when they, they get back to job back and then when these things goes to air, I don't showcase not... <laughs> and I've told the world already. That means when, when I will become an that, embarrassment. You're worried that you may you will not never know, man. You will never know. You will never know. <laughs> mind you, my mind is still locked here in the village. Yeah. I'm not yet duly stretched. Not at all. No, no. Only later in, in the years you'll say, oh. So you, you got you got anxiety of thinking that maybe you short, but you're not sure if you'll appear. Ah, but like when you on set, <laughs> people talk, man. I don't know, Osman no, Bani was cancelled. Like, oh, so they do these things. Mm -hmm. And at that time, you know, you are in, in this group of people who are celebrated mm -hmm. um, people that you see on TV and you're working with them. Yeah. And at the time you isolate yourself, you put yourself in the little corner. True. Yeah. It's those, uh, we were talking about it earlier, yeah. of downplaying your success or this moment. Uh, not only that, you just feel like you don't belong there. Yeah. Because even the talk, you know, completely different. The tone, the... Yes. They are yeah. more confident. They are more confidence and the opulence thereof. And people are talking about where they work, what they, they said, hustles and stuff. They're talking about their families, their cars. Jeez. And I'm just a little boy, thin, tall, mm. very dark. I'm not getting the complexion. I'm getting the complexion over the years. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> How long did it take you to wash off that I don't belong here state of mind um i think you're late 2004 yeah that's a long time yeah i think there was one year that mubango was not on air i think 2000 yeah one or two yeah somewhere there what were the reasons do you remember uh, because then they were being commissioned for like um it was 26, 26, okay. and then it becomes 52 episodes. Oh, that yeah, type. 26, okay. then oh, it's when it was 52. changing. Because yeah. it, it didn't start as a daily. No, it wasn't yes. uh, fully fledged on a daily basis. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so yeah, I gained took confidence, a while man. To... I gained confidence, yeah. What, what is it about about that that changed your state of mind? Did you now realize or rent like Keshab? No, I think I think, you know, as time goes, you become more comfortable. Mm. And as time goes, uh, you develop, you know, a, a sound understanding of where you are, what mm. you are doing, and what is it all about. At times you get to know the intention behind that which you are doing. So so your oh, your world gets to open gradually, mm. you know, yeah. You can see it. Yes, now you yeah. can see it perfectly. It's no longer bled. Yeah. Yeah. That's all the money at home. You said you changed your household. Yeah. The first income yeah. when you're now you're living at home still. Yeah. You are earning money. Yeah. This is chalk and cheese, what you're earning and what they're used to. Yeah. What changes do you recall? Because <laughs> I'm curious to know what happens so, in a, an environment like what that. What I did with my first salary, I think I I, I bought a TV. Okay, a now huge, you have yeah, a TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The huge um um, 52 inch. Ah, it was 52. Yes. Uh, it was 48, man. We, there was there was a big 52 centimeter uh, TV that we all liked. No, no, it yes. was a, a Sony 48, yeah. Yeah. And... Uh, now you want to see yourself. Yeah, definitely at home in my comfort now. <laughs> and, and the iron and the... You know, we just received electricity. Oh, yes. yeah. You have to buy iron. iron. Yeah, and the, the, the kettle, you get what I mean. And and for my siblings, that was wow. For my <laughs> siblings, that was wow. Yeah. You know, and, and it brought so much change and take away, you know, the shame as well, mm. in a way. And 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 I think I gave half of that money to my mom to say, you know, here's the money and then you will save. Yeah. I didn't even have an account at the bank. So. Did, did you stay like that for a while? And I bought myself a cell phone as well, yeah. Hell yeah. Because my, now my... 
people were calling me on neighbors and it was not nice. <laughs> Sometimes they call at night oh, and yes, then they don't tell you. Call time yeah, for call and time and that. stuff, yeah. So um, you needed to be found. Uh, yes, I needed to be found. So that's crazy. And that cell phone now when I go to school it's a problem now. I'm the only one who's got a cell phone. The teachers don't even have a cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> now the, the teachers want to receive calls on my phone. <laughs> man, it was, it was nice, man. I had a good time, man. I can't believe Yeah, I, I had a good time. I like how you say it's a good time. Uh, uh, mysteries. <laughs> yeah, looking yeah. For you. But, 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 <laughs> so now the teachers who found themselves with, with a beautiful problem. They don't want my phone to be on in the class, but they want to receive calls in it again. <laughs> and so they want to... <laughs> <laughs> phone must work. Yeah, my phone must work. Then, yeah. What a time. And then the problem started as well. Yeah? Yeah, you know, Moose. Which one? <laughs> you, you had girl problems. You were too young, though. No, but now, you know, uh, I'm the man about town. <laughs> <laughs> Did it go to your head at all? Even if it's for... No, a... not at all. Yeah. Um, My mom was very strict yeah. the, with their teachings. Like, you know, I'm at home, chilled under the tree, and then somebody passes, greets, and like, how? Since when does this one greet you? Hey, man, you're a star oh, okay. now. No, she was making a statement. Okay. Yeah, at that time, he, the queen of the village. You so. became that. No, the, the, the one was greeting. Oh. Yeah, the ones who would normally pass. But now they want to have a conversation and stationary. <laughs> so yeah, man. Hey, well, uh... <laughs> <laughs> you, you seem to have a lot of memories of that time. <laughs> My kids will watch this podcast. Just now. <laughs> There's a lot you don't want them to know. <laughs> no, but they they have tendencies of you know poking fun at me. Yes. So no, no, it's fine. But but I had a great time, man. Yeah. I had a great time and. And the shift that came was was amazing. It was amazing. Only, I can only imagine from what you've described. Yeah. To this. Yeah. And and that helped me to dream more. Mm. And and I would believe that now that's far I've become. Yeah. 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 The first time you saw yourself. Yeah. Do you remember that? Yes. You were not at home, you said. I was not at home, no. Was it an event? As in as in come everybody. Dude. It's gonna to happen today. Dude. Gabriel's debut. Imagine. <laughs> the, I was the talk of the village already because the rumor had spread that oh. no, apparently this one is is working. Yeah. And So yeah. <laughs> uh, the whole village was like and it was crammed. Man, you we must go to somebody's dining room and we all crammed there. Waiting. And waiting. And then the, the credit working, the, the opening sequence. Yeah. And now we're waiting. Yeah. There I appear, man. Like, yo. How, was, how was that feeling for you? I can't describe it. Uh, yeah. But it was it was overwhelming. Mm. Very overwhelming. And and fulfilling at the same time, I must say. I can only imagine. Yeah. Eh? Very fulfilling. And 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 being celebrated in that dining room was, was enough. Was enough. Does it still cross your mind? Oh, definitely. You can't. I, I cannot forget that. Yeah. There, are, there are certain things that you would never forget, regardless of where you can go in the world. Mm. And such moments are are always vivid in your mind. They only come once. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, to be celebrated in a dining room. Yeah, by neighbors and, and, and the noise that the people made when I appeared there. One. <laughs> <laughs> wow, man! Yeah. You make me feel like this is such a special <laughs> it was too special for me. Imagine, I can understand. Imagine fully. myself there, man. Yo, I can understand completely. Yo. Actually, I Yo. get, I get it. Trust yeah. me. But at the same time, they are mocking you, you know. Then how come you don't have your own TV? <laughs> <laughs> I forget you are in somebody else's dining uh, room. Bella, it's not like when you rap, they pay you. Uh, I think they still took like two, three weeks. Yes, because of course. Because they still it's, came to Jobek to finish month shooting. month and, yeah, and, 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 and all of that. Yeah. Yes. And I had to cash a check. Ooh. And all my pockets were like... Full of man. Ash, my man. <laughs> I was not allowed. The first chair. I was walk around. Who's looking? Yeah, I was with Mashabel. I'm not the lagoon. I go say, I'm from the Pitori Lewana. They're the inventor. Jeez, man, your life. Yeah. 
Your life story is incredible. No, man. That's what I went through, man. That's what I went through. And <laughs> it was something else, man. It was something else. And at the same time, you don't believe it yourself because it feels like a dream. Yeah. It feels like a dream. And um, and then I moved to Johannesburg uh, full time from 2004. And again, another layer, colorful. That experience, I remember I spoke to Rami Cheney about moving to Joburg and yeah. she describes it as, whoa, <sighs> this is a big city. <laughs> oh, she God. tells it like how she was in the car looking at the lights. Yeah. And these are like, it's a day for passing. You have to be removed from the village to the city. Then you will appreciate the city. <laughs> I guess. But being born in the city, you won't appreciate it. Nothing, you see nothing. It's it's actually interesting. It speaks of us as, as South Africans. Yeah. There's something about our appreciation of what we have yeah. that we don't quite realize. Yes. You see it when you travel to other worlds. Yeah, to other countries. That yes. you say, oh, really? Actually, what we have is is really good. Yes, <laughs> yes. And you're quite right. And and most South Africans are not familiar with that aspect of, of us or our being because we neglect mm. and take that which we have just. And it is not. Yeah. It is not. And I long for, you know, ourselves as a country to to take pride in who we are and what we have. And as a result, we start appreciating and defending that which we have. You know, you walk downtown Johannesburg, you're like, we're messing up a beautiful place. Yo. We're messing up a beautiful place. You walk in in, in Milan, mm. it's, it's the same architecture. Pretty much, yeah. But well-maintained, yeah. you know, well-guarded. You won't see littering. Mm. But you come back, Joburg, same buildings, but shame. Same design, same shame. everything. What yeah. a shame. It it takes so you what had, a shame. You, you speak of the same concept that we you have to be removed to appreciate it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Your your first experience coming to the city. In of downtown Rome. Johannesburg. Ash. <laughs> Wait, was it a was it a one man trip? Yes. <laughs> No, I, no, no, I'm privileged, my brother. No, I don't do <laughs> one man trip. And I, I the, the production will buy me a ticket, okay, um, a bus, and then and a luxury bus. That yes, is. everybody translux. Yeah, well, how how those, and yes. you're reading your book, and then you're traveling to Joburg. When you get to Joburg, you call, and then actually when you get there at a particular station, mm. you find the driver there he comes, takes you to the lodge or hotel. Yeah. And you're well taken care of. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're yeah. well taken care of. And uh, this is life. How did you experience it, though? What did you... Were you fascinated at all? Extremely. Yeah. Extremely. Mind you, I I, I, I knew hotel through <laughs> Mubango. Oh, yeah, of course. You know, and, yes. and everything and anything came or emanated from that. And being picked up from Park Station to the hotel, mm. you know, and everything was just too luxurious, man. <laughs> Everything paid for, and then on the side they give you the money again. Like if they are paid for this, why are they still giving me more money? You know. And back <laughs> then, the ABC used to insist that you know you get um, um, SNT. That was so ridiculous. Unfortunately, mm. now they have no, cut it. The world has changed. You know what I yeah. mean? I so, was I was I was at the Metro Awards. Trust yeah. me, the world is very different now. Yeah. It's got so, S and T's nah, looks very different now. You will cry. Yeah. But back then, you know, you knew if I were to be in Johannesburg for two weeks. Yeah. So what I would do is I'll take that whole money and buy clothes for everybody. Jeez. Yeah. At home. Yeah. And you go to downtown Johannesburg, and then you know when you get home, ah, the big boss is back now. <laughs> and it was a lot of money. Yeah. It was a lot of money. It's it's not an experience most of us will know and understand. Yeah. The transition. No, you have to be there to understand it. Yeah. You have to be there to appreciate it. And you have to have the background to get it. Did you immediately think this is where you want to end up? At home? As this place, this city of gold? Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. And, and I started asking myself, what is it that I can do? Mm. to sustain this okay and and that gave me the audacity and the courage to to put effort in the work that i was doing and i'm like okay so if here i had to replace somebody that means these guys if i mess up here they can replace me yeah 
So I then started devising, you know, uh, characteristics or elements for the character so that the character becomes so unique Whoa. to an extent that even if they think of replacing me, they find it difficult. There's no one else. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and I think that worked for me in a way yes. because the character became so unique and, and so relevant. Was there any research that went into from you personally? Definitely, definitely. Yeah. And amongst other things, I think I could relate with the character mm. because of, you know, the upbringing in the village. We'll go to Khorong and see how, you know, yeah. uh, the Koro was handled and the respect that people in the village was giving to, you know, the, the, our own traditional yes. leader yeah. and, and so on and so on. And, and asking around um, the cultural advisor, uh, and the directors and and people back at home, it helped me, you mm, know, um, mm. to complement the picture, so to say. I wonder because when when if it's twenty three years of this character, yeah, you literally grew up on TV. Yes, uh, yes. that means the character also grew up on TV. Yeah, he didn't come in as a chief. No, he no, must no, have no, come in no, as, no. A, as a as a young boy. Chief. Yes, yeah, yeah. As a, as a boy. not even a chief. Not even, yeah. but but in line. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. In line for for, for, the, for the throne. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. What what leadership lessons did you learn from from playing this character? I I learned that um, family is everything and needs to be defended at all times. Mm. I learned that um, you will have issues in the family, but what is important is how you strive to find solution. Yeah. And I also learned that. Um, when you're in leadership position, it's not about you. It's about the people that you are leading. And when it's about the people that you are leading, others will betray you, but you are still their leader nonetheless. Yeah. So 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 I learned I learned a lot. Yeah. Even yeah. even the people you lead will betray you, but you still have to lead them. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And it's not nice. I can only imagine. Yeah, it's it's not nice. But at the same time, I think I learned that um Growth is not good enough unless it makes you good for life. Okay. And by being good for life, we see that we see that through your behavior, mm -hmm. the decision you make, uh, and how you treat mankind. Yeah. And and I think that has encouraged me to embrace the spirit of Ubuntu in a different way. Mm -hmm. To say, you are because I am, and I am because you are. And there's value in loving and appreciating people. We, as as it's said so many times, and people always say, "My child, you find a way to talk politics yeah. in every conversation." Yeah, yours is a political role. Yeah, being a a chief. Yeah, is a political role. There's always those who want to dethrone you. Yes, uh, who will <clears throat> try. Even your death. Yes, <laughs> speaks yes. to that yes. as well. Precisely. So it, it makes me sit back and wonder because South Africa is challenged. Yeah, in that space. Currently, and now more than ever in the history of our country, where mm. leadership is at its look, we have a new mayor yes. in Joburg again, again, <laughs> like literally in two weeks. Yeah, we've had two or three. That's what's happening to us right now. When you look at where we are as a country, from the character you've played, yeah. there's a point you raised. You said leadership is not about you; it's about the people you lead. Yeah, at its core, it's a selfless act. Precisely, it's not about. You you walk into it knowing that you're giving yourself up. Yeah. From what you've seen and what you see now here in South Africa, what do you have to say to us as a collective? Because they say you are you deserve you are you deserve the the, the, the leader that you have mm -hmm. because in a lot of ways you've allowed him to exist. Yeah. What do you say to us where we are now? Oh, I think we need to sober up. Yeah. From that which has swallowed us, and I think. The time has come for us to have meaningful decision, uh, meaningful Discussions. conversations yes. yeah. that will then propel us to take sober decision that would, amongst other things, tap into how do we elect our leaders? Hmm. So if you're going to elect a leader based on the noise that he makes or she makes, you will lose a lot. And... Again, a question needs to be asked, what makes a leader? So our society has lost it completely in a sense that uh, those who make the loudest noise are being pushed to be leaders or to take positions of leadership, mm. yet they are not leaders. 
And that is why we are in this disarray that we find ourselves in. Yeah. And it's difficult to, to revise that mm -hmm. because we are living in a society now where you raise your voice, you are eliminated, and nothing happens to those who have eliminated you. Mm, it's I a guess. scary phenomenon. I was, I was in Turkey two weeks ago. They were doing their campaigns for national elections. And how they go about their things, man, wow. They sit and debate. Mm. You get what I mean? Yeah. And, and they talk about how they take the country forward. Mm. And, and it's not about who is who and who is aligned to who. Who is a member of who? You understand? So once you become a member of a member, it defeats the purpose. Yeah. Because you now have to form different cabals that even, don't... Even within... Even within the same movement. That yeah. does not benefit the movement, the people that you're leading. Yeah. And, and I, think, I think us as a society, not necessarily as political parties, as a society, we need, we need to stand up and be counted mm. and take responsibility in saying... We don't want to be led by people like this. If this person is doing this and that, let's do away with them. But it's going to be difficult for us as, as a country because we got 411 political parties. <laughs> yes, and many. Yeah, 411 <laughs> means many. <laughs> That's the language I use with no, my no. friends. <laughs> yeah. So so what's the purpose? Yeah. It then puts emphasis on saying everyone wants to be a leader. To what end? Because they want to serve themselves. Don't you think also equally the problem could be that those who can be as selfless as we're describing yeah. are not raising their hands? Because they don't make the loudest noise. Yeah. Cause we, so we, even if they raise their hands, they won't be acknowledged. Because mm. we exist in a time when those who make noise will be the ones that will be seen. Yeah. So you make the loudest noise and then you, 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 you have money, then you are done. That's it. You are done. Yeah. You can inf buy influence. Yeah. You know, you can buy the mashabellas of this world to go and campaign on your behalf. And we'll you can do run it. the media mogul to come and run your campaign. And we'll do it. And they will do it. Because you're paying us. But the intellectuals who, who have been trained institutionally mm. and amongst others, you know, who, who were born leaders won't make that noise. Mm. And when the noise starts, they pull back. They pull back. And that's the unfortunate part that we find ourselves faced with. Yeah. Is there, is there so, so I think the time has come for us to go into hibernation. Like a snake, we come back with a new skin. Mm. Yeah. Are you saying what should be our next move as South Africa? We need a reform. Yeah. Yeah. We need um, a political reform and an electoral reform. So this thing of voting for a party, we must do away with it. Mm. Even if it means voting for Mashabal as an individual, as an individual it will yeah. go a long way. To a large extent, uh, we, we, you can campaign as an individual. It'll yeah, cost but, but, yeah, but the dynamics are and, not conducive for yes, that. Yeah. yeah. So, so, so the dynamics on the ground are still pro-party. Yeah, yeah. You, you understand? So, so that's where the difficult part is. And, and also you're dealing with, because I, I always say in this conversation like this, yeah. that South Africans are still the ones who are putting these people in power, whoever these people are. Yeah, the votes, see, the vote see, still, right? Yes, the yeah. vote is still, there's still, <laughs> there's still queues of people who are going to vote. I remember I, I voted in the morning, very early in, in Pretoria, the last yeah. elections. I was the only one that was voting because the people of Tswane were saying, no Sputla, no vote. Yeah. <laughs> so there was, yes, there was the no one there. Uh, but there's a... Um, uh, and then uh, later on, I visited a friend of mine and he said, hey, you know, I haven't voted. Yeah. And I'm thinking I shouldn't go. I convinced them to go. Yeah. So we ended up uh, going together. Mm -hmm. And I stood there and where he was voting, it was a nice long queue. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I remember looking at it thinking, oh, hell, okay. This, this, this particular community is clear where it's going. Yeah. And, and as many as we are, yeah. either we don't participate or when we do, we make decisions that bring these conversations to light, where we're saying, hey, man, Hante, how is it that you see this person is just loud and nothing else, but we still put them into power? But you see, th th there's power in what you are saying, in a sense that um, the, the Mahua that you're talking about, mm. they know how to take care of their constituency. Yeah. But our own people cannot take care of their own constituency. That too. You vote for Mashavela to be a councillor, mm. and then he leaves that area upon being... Voted on. <laughs> Voted yeah. on. Yes. And you ask yourself, why? Who are you going to work for, Kant? Who are you going to serve? Mm. 
You know, we put you there to service us. And our own people are failing the smallest thing just to provide service. That, and, that's the only thing that our people want. And you have money to do it. And you, exactly. <laughs> Enough. Yeah. You know, when you, when you travel, you realize that other countries you know, are very poor, but they're doing a lot with the little that they have. And you come back home here, you can see that, you know, there's there's great potential of us doing wonders. But we are not in sync. We are not in sync. It's unfortunate because yeah. um, the decisions that politicians make, they affect us and impact us greatly. Every day. Then we are forced to tap into that space. Every day. What's and the load sharing schedule today? Every day. <laughs> you say, I, I, I <laughs> oh, as we speak. This yeah. Is, oh, I'll teach. That's the reality of our lives. Unfortunately. Yes. Unfortunately. And that's why when, 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 when someone who's an actor or even a soccer player, a musician... Yeah makes political commentary and people say, what do you know about politics? Stay in your lane. Yeah. Say, but I know about politics because my toilet doesn't work. It affects no me water. on a daily basis yeah. on, on different fronts. Yeah. So I'm forced to tap into this space. To be a politician. Yeah. Be I voted. So what do you mean? What do I know? Mm -hmm. I had to, Now when I was voting, I knew about it. Today I don't know about it. Yeah. I can't be yeah. a subscriber. No. No, don't force me to be a subscriber. Because I'm within. So I must, mm. I must comment like somebody who is you within. You can be a spectator up there. No, 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 no. And, and I think that's another unfortunate thing that we do to say, no, we'll leave politicians to do with it. Mm -hmm. And that's why we are where we are. Because we're not involved. Yeah. Yeah. So we need to be involved at some stages as, as communities and, and, and as people. Your life changed a lot from then to now. Yeah. It's 23 years of this. Yes. It's uh, it's experiences, it's fame and everything. I don't know about the fame, but yeah. <laughs> no, trust me. <laughs> Let me tell you, the burden of, of being in front of a camera comes with fame that surprises you. Yeah. <laughs> Did it surprise you when you were first recognized no, by definitely. total strangers? Definitely, definitely. Yeah. And, and I think I've been very fortunate to say... Um, it's a positive recognition mm. um, that does not come with a burden of being accused or labeled or being <laughs> howled at. And it opens ways for you, man. Mm. Yeah, it, it does things for you. It, it, it puts you in an advantageous position. And if you are sober enough, you can utilize that to yeah. advance in life that's true yeah. yeah yeah maybe i must consider being a politician <laughs> i'm not sure about that <laughs> <laughs> I, I know i would never be <laughs> <laughs> that's another problem that we have yeah you know um not only that we should see opportunities and and capitalize mm. but we should be able to stand up and be counted maybe and i say this and I, i'm thinking about it after having said i that statement i know i'll never be yeah is because of the color of the politics that we've painted politicians with. We we have a, a specific image of it. Yeah. That currently. Yes. Yeah. That young people would say, "Yeah, I'm from Tolimal. We are born." Yeah. And then there are some who say, "I'm from Vula. I'm opportunity." That you yeah. know, in Ali, in Ali, negative connotations. Absolutely. There's yeah. not even a question about that. And yeah. even even I'm sure even those that are ambitious and want to be big politicians, yeah. their goals are not just yeah. in a lot of ways. Yes. And but yes. yes, in every situation you'll find those that are saying, I need to make a difference. You yeah. see, that's the politician that you're probably imagining. Yeah. And that's a politician that all of us sit back and say, those are the people we want. Mm. I was having a conversation with someone and we were talking about the type of leader we need now. Yeah. We are at a time in our lives when we don't need someone who will complain about you. Yeah. You are the one who won the elections. Yes. And as me, who's my role is to complain about you about all the me. time. Yeah. That's what I do all the all day, every day. Yes. I'm I'm called an opposition. Yes. My job is to highlight your flaws. Yeah. And so hoping that you'll do better. Yeah. But I gain points while I do this. Hoping that I will topple you. Yeah, I think South African politics has become an emergency that we don't need me, mm. the complainer. Mm. We need you to do a good job to act accordingly. We need we need you, the one who won. Yeah, to be the one that solves. So I become completely unnecessary in the story. But I think it's the setup. Uh, the current setup puts much power in those that we have elected. True. 
Yeah, and us as 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 the voting constituency, we take a back seat and have trust, if not faith, that those that we have elected will do what is necessarily needed. Yeah. And unfortunately, it's not happening. Yeah. And I don't know when we're gonna wake up and say, no, that's not the mandate that we gave you. True. And as a result, we're taking we're back taking our it power. Away. Yeah. So it takes forever. Phew. It takes forever. <laughs> and the most unfortunate part is when people complain and nothing happens and complain and complain and yet nothing happens. It breaks my heart mm. to drive around the streets where there's sewer everywhere and our kids are, you know, playing, playing the there. Sea. Yeah. The people of Emalaseni, yeah. uh, they uh, stoned the mayor. Yeah. Because they're tired. That's unfortunate, man. That's yeah. unfortunate. Yet there's people who are going to offices saying they're going to do their job. And that's part of their responsibility to provide water and electricity mm. to the multitudes of our people. Sure. Yet it's not happening. You know, it becomes sad. And I think, I think as people, as, uh, as South Africans, we must learn to be ashamed. Mm. Because when you are ashamed, you are challenged to rectify your mistakes. True. Yeah. Are, but, are you but, saying we carry pride and yet there's nothing to be proud of? Definitely. You see it every day. You see it every day. I don't think there's 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 a person who can go to their work whose responsibility is take care of that street that is got the running sewer and that can go in and out and everything is okay and normal. They drive past what they it. what do they say when they drive past there? And, and I think the time has come for us to allow our conscience to engage us. Yeah. That's why I'm saying we must learn to be ashamed. I was driving, this example I made many times. I was driving to Fixburg in Lesotho, in the area of, in the border of Lesotho once. Yeah. The trip I was meant to take two hours, took four hours because the road was so bad. Yeah. The following Monday, I, I insisted on having a chat with the, the MEC of transport in the Free State. In that side. They were not available yeah. uh, because they knew what I was going to talk about. Yes. And they made a, a, um, a spokesperson available to speak to me. To engage you. Yes. I said, it's fine. I need anybody. Yeah. To put them on the radio and ask this one question. Yeah. Which roads do you use? Yeah. <laughs> when you it, drive around. Because yes. it seemed like they used other roads. They have special roads. Do they ever complain though on their own? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> this is a conversation I should have with them. I, I, I'm puzzled by it. I, and you just said it. If a person drives out of their home and drives in the storage yeah. and goes to work and their job was to fix that storage and yeah. comes back again. What happens in their head? I don't know. Yet there's dozens and dozens of complaints about the same thing on their desk. Like this is such there's a There's something puzzle. wrong with us, man. And 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 and, no, and you were talking about us. pride. Yeah. And yet they are proud politicians. No, there's something wrong with us. <laughs> Look at us thinking about it. No, there's something wrong with us. Oh, we need to revisit ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. What happened? Anyway. I wonder what happened. <laughs> I wonder how we got Cause, here. Because you spoke about Ubuntu. Yeah. I saw a tiny clip of Tom Cruise, who was in South Africa, and speaks of Ubuntu. Says so it's something that he found out. He found in, out, yeah. A South unique Africa. something that he yes, found in South yes. Africa, yes. Uh, Obama speaks of Ubuntu. Yeah. It's in some of the speeches that he's done in the past. Yeah. I don't know if we still have that. Ubuntu is something very phenomenal. You travel everywhere in the world. They don't have it. Mm. And even when you break it down, it's then that they get it. Oh, is this what it means? Yes. So this is how you guys live. So you embrace each other, regardless of knowing who the next person is. Yeah. I'm like, yes. So there's so much value in that. Mm. You know, just for, for one to say you are because I am. It means you are my brother. I embrace you. I Absolutely. love you and I appreciate you. Yeah. And, and I trust you. Mm. And it's unfortunate that that is gone. We don't trust, we don't embrace each other anymore. Yeah. Yeah. We take if, our... if we were trusting and embracing each other, it, it was not going to be that at this time and age, we got kids who are going to school with empty stomach. Mm. And instead of providing food for them, we still sit down and debate it. Yeah. Or who use, uh, what are these pit toilets? Yeah. And at this debate. time and age. Yeah. No, man. I, th I don't think this is what our for better fought for politically. No. Let's go back to your career. Yeah. Uh, I think we're here about my career, not politics. Yeah, that's, right. <laughs> that's why I'm realigning. I'm recalibrating. <laughs> this is a recalibration. <laughs> what opportunities came out of this? Because things that you had, you were interested in when you were much younger, Yeah. and you spoke about it, you said it, it, it being 
recognized yeah. has one tiny advantage yeah. of, of opening opportunities. Yeah. What opportunities have you taken advantage of? A lot, eh? A lot. Um, uh, being as Indian and being on television brought me a lot of opportunities. Yeah. Nice recognition that came with respect, mm. which I respect and appreciate. And today I'm doing a lot of things mm. um, that came as, you know, freeing benefits from, from, from portraying this Character. iconic role. Yeah. And, and I'm grateful. And at times we laugh with um, my former boss, you know, Waduma about mm -hmm. it. And like, you know, uh, dude, I made you. So you're doing all these <laughs> things because I made you. I see you traveling the world. Mm. And when you are there, you don't even remember me. Like, no, I, I appreciate you. Yeah. That is why I'm here. You're always conscious of it. You get what I mean? And, I realize and, you're ducking my question, but it's fine. Yeah, but no, <laughs> not really. Not really. You know. And I think that's something that my mom taught me already. Don't talk too much. Mm. Yeah. Don't, Let, let's talk about the farming. What do you don't, farm? Don't talk, don't brag. Okay. You know, be grateful of what you have, but yeah. um, don't gloat, you know. Um, yeah, but I do a number of things from running a traveling agency, yeah. you know, small Anyana business here and there, you mm. know, farming that I learned from my parents. And yeah, I'm seeing. You know, mm. yeah. So those are some of the little things that I'm doing on the side. Tell me, about, <laughs> tell, tell, tell me about, tell me about the travel business. Yeah, for one second. Yeah, I had a chat with um, the CEO of uh, SA Tra Tourism. Tourism, yeah. Yeah, and it's an exciting space. Yeah, uh, but also very competitive. Yes. Where do you take us as potential clients? What we do, we, and this is what I believe in. I believe in taking people to where I've had an experience. Okay. So that when I talk about the experience that the person is going to have, they get to see that or more. That's it. And and that gives me um, so much confidence in knowing that I'm selling something that I'm going to deliver. Mm -hmm. So so we sell traveling packages for individuals and for groups to different destinations globally mm -hmm. and anywhere in the world, from Dubai, anywhere in the continent, mm -hmm. um, Europe, Wow. And and so on and so on and and it's an exciting space, yeah. um, not that lucrative, but yeah, you know, <laughs> there's there's so much benefits in traveling. Um, it it stretches your mind. It gives you a perspective about the globe. Um, it 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 opens an array for of opportunities for yeah. you if you are a you know a person who's got eyes to see opportunities. Um, it it teaches you about different cultures, mm -hmm. uh, what mm -hmm. other cultures find value in. It teaches you uh, unique ways of life and, 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 and an array of other things. You're able to bring things back home. Yeah, precisely. Yeah. precisely. That's what I'm saying, Uri. If, if you have an eye for things, you would come back a completely different person with mm -hmm. one trip. Yeah. yeah. What do you farm? Uh, cash crops. Okay. Yeah, cash crops are are easy and they are not complicated. I mean, in three months you are harvesting. Mm. Yeah. And and it's a consistent. Um, it should be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it should be. We eat every day, so yes. it should be a consistent thing. We eat every day, and we need it to sustain ourselves. Yeah. But also, as African people, we need for to find value in in agriculture because. Farming is the backbone of the economy. Mm. I understand that most African countries, they leverage in mining. But at the same time, you know, farming is a daily use mm. um, aspect of our being. We're here because we've eaten and we've eaten because a farmer has done what is... Their work. Yeah. So I believe in farming. I've seen it. It has raised me. It has made me a better person than I am today. Mm. And... I try to encourage it on my kids, but hey, I'm not interested. <laughs> they're, they're modern kids. Oh, they're not interested. <laughs> they're modern kids. Nah, Spending time with in the uh, in the farm is But not at least exciting. the young one, you know, it's got love for flowers, you yeah. know, looks after them, and that gives me hope that maybe he would want to tap At into least there's that. someone there. Yeah. Even yeah. if he does not necessarily focus on it, but at least he must have that background. Yeah. Because um having a background of 
a number of things at an early age gives you an opportunity to choose accordingly when yes. you want to pursue your career. You, you're talking about kids. Your yeah. profile doesn't speak of a wife. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just asking. Yeah. Innocently. I won't talk away well, I had to to prepare for this. <laughs> yeah, I had to stalk you. <laughs> no, unfortunately, I divorced um, 2019, 2020. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what lessons did you learn from being married? I learned that um, marriage is not a one man show. Um, I see value in marriage. I believe in marriage and family. So, but I also learned that um, it's not meant to be a jail. If it's not working, try and if 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 you fail, pull out. Mm. And there's power in letting go. If it happens, you will rekindle and reconnect again. Mm. But um, I've had a fair share of my own, you know, marriage. I've seen the good. I've seen the so not so nice, mm. you know. Mm. But um, I'm a firm believer in marriage, and I'll definitely. Still Try it gonna again. get get married. Yeah. yeah, I'm just enjoying my moment for now. <laughs> yeah. Do Do you have a fish laying in the water? Ash, you see, when you are Gabriel, it's a difficult yeah thing fishing to fishing go about. exercise. Yeah, fishing is <laughs> it's difficult for you because yeah. you don't know for sure if this person is literally coming for you genuinely or for, or for, or for the attachments. Yeah. You know, uh, now compounded by, you know, um, traveling and this and that, you get to look like, you know, you are it. And you yourself, you know that you are not it. Mm. And you're like, hmm, you this on that. <laughs> You'd rather have someone that doesn't recognize you. Uh, what difficult. are the chances? It's <laughs> difficult these days, unless when you are traveling, when you are abroad. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nobody knows who yeah, you are. <laughs> yeah. Then you say it's genuine. Yeah. You would say, yeah. Do, yeah. do, do you what is it that makes you still think marriage is a, is an is an awesome institution for you to venture? I was I was raised in in a fully fledged family. Yeah. Um as I said earlier on and I've seen the veil of it. Um and that's the that, that's the only reference I have. True. Yeah, of parenting. And amongst other things my father's teachings that emanated within the ambit of a family mm. are still resonating with me. And the reference of marriage that I saw my mom and my father, it's a positive one. I didn't see them having issues or whatnot. And I thought they were always happy. Mm. Hey, and I got married. <laughs> um, uh, it was completely different to that which I witnessed. Yeah. And I then realized, oh, that means Libona, they were not only happy leveraging on the positive yeah. maybe there were issues and they found you know their own corner to deliberate upon the issues until they reach an amicable agreement mm -hmm. but the fact that they managed to contain it and hide and, and hide it from us it gave me gave me confidence yeah. to say that means there's a way of doing it i might not be striking the right chords do you feel you could have saved yours no from where i sit i feel i've i've done my part okay and and I've reached closure, so to say. Mm. You know, when you have fought for something, you take pride to say, I've done my part and yeah. it was left on the other person. Yes. Of course, the other person would have their own view, but now I have my view and I'm happy with my view. Because marriage is one that I don't have experience in. Yeah. Uh, and, and interesting you say that and it just made so much sense in my, in my head. That yeah. Maybe one of the reasons why marriage is not a priority in my life yeah. It's because my mom, my dad died when I was so young. So yeah. I didn't see that. And yes. you said that's yes. what you saw. That's yes. the reference yes. you had. Yeah. And that's why it's something that you're likely to venture into again exactly. very easily. Mm -hmm. Because that picture is still in my mind and the picture is very vivid and it looks perfect. Yes. I remember one day going to Thando with both my parents and I was wearing a two-piece Mm. <laughs> and that picture is still in my mind. Uh, and you were happy. It and I was happy. It was we 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 got to a restaurant, we sat, yeah. we had a meal, and it was completely different to what we have at home. Oh. And I wished that you know we could have this <laughs> experience often, you know. <laughs> and that's, that's amazing. And it's amazing that that picture is still set in my mind, mm. and and I still remember it like it's yesterday. Yeah. And and it's such pictures that constantly remind me 
of marriage. Mm, well, yeah. It's not so bad. No, 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 no. I'll, I'll definitely get back. Yeah. I'll definitely get back. <laughs> I like that. That one, I, no, I promise Do you have a deadline? <laughs> not deadline. Because if you start putting deadline, you'll end up grabbing the nearest object and yeah. the repercussions will be very dire on you. Oh, hell. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> mm. But you're available. Oh, yeah. I'm when you put it like that, <laughs> I just when you put it like that, it just got. Let me tell you what I'm doing here. I'm trying to caption this video by saying Gabriel is available. <laughs> he, may be, he may be dead. He may be dead, but yeah. he's available. <laughs> no, no. I'm seeing somebody, and you know, I'm content. Yeah. And and she's somebody who believes in family, God fearing, mm -hmm. hardworking as well. Compliments the things I do. Yeah and um, embraces my kids. And and I think that's what a man needs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and I do the same, you know, reciprocating their her efforts. Yeah. And it goes a long way to find somebody who resonates with you across the board. That's true. You know? And I think the only challenge is how do we sustain this? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. That's the challenge. Eh? That's the only challenge. Even, even in your marriage, yeah. surely you thought, I got the right one. If I had asked you this yeah. when you were guys were early, you would have said, "Cool, hundred no, no, I would say ups. I, I got it. Yeah, but um, it's sustaining that. No, the but but you see, at the same time, um, experience is everything. Mm. Yeah. So so as as you grow, you know, you you accumulate experiences along the journey, um, and you you know, I like talking about perspectives. Mm. You know, you develop mm. a perspective, yeah. and and. Some of the things that I know and understand now, had I, I wouldn't no. have done. No, yeah. You know, I wouldn't have ventured into certain things the way I did. Yeah. You know, so it's one of those. It's one of those. So one can only learn and grow. But in that growing, we need to open both our eyes. Mm. Yeah. We need to open both our eyes. And when we make um, big decisions, um, we, we must engage our sobriety. Mm. Yeah, don't don't get carried away. Yeah, yeah, don't get carried By away. By the the noise, the fanfare. No, don't, <laughs> don't. Taking a trip to Milan or Paris it does not necessarily mean that you, you know. You found the wife. <laughs> yeah. So sometimes we do that as, as yeah. guys, and and I talk to my friends, and they're like, you know, ah, if I get this one, I marry. Hey, basob. <laughs> Hmm. The beauty does not necessarily define yeah. the sustenance and maintenance of that relationship. Will we see you on TV again anytime soon? Ah, uh, I love television, man. Mm. Yeah, I love television, and I think I'll, I'll, I'm not lost. Okay. Yeah. I'm <laughs> Into not the lost. Screen. No, I'm still within the fraternity, and yeah. Um, and and one thing that I would like to say is um. I appreciate the show Mubango so much. Mm -hmm. It has made me um and and I believe in it because it it carries the spirit of South Africans. Mm -hmm. It's a purely South African show that gives um so much hope mm -hmm. um to everyone, you know, both people who are in the cities and in the rural areas, they found they find value in it. That's true. And and that needs to be to be encouraged. And um it's shocking that uh, uh, after the funeral of the chief on TV, um the people embarked on an outrage of sort <laughs> to say, How could you do this to us? Yeah. And thereafter I think I uh, I did a number of interviews on different platforms. Mm, I think there was one on Metro. Yeah. Yes. And I think the Metro one was um, the one that also created another hoo ha mm. that forced my producers to say, Are you sure you really, really want to leave? <laughs> and I was like, No, I mean, now I'm done, guys. And like, you know, yeah. um, the producers would like to see you. And if you could make time. Yeah. So I don't know what they want to say. But, um, I'm amiable, man. Mm. I'm amiable. Yeah. Because you know? I, if your death was violent, man. <laughs> it's a, Ash. I don't know if it's a reflection of South Africa and its challenges. You could have died quietly in your sleep. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Definitely. I think, you know, in the nature of television, um, the mm. writers and the producers opted for that. But um, it's also, I think, influenced by 
what we are going through, you know, mm. uh, in the world that we live in, and which is not a nice sign. Mm -mm. You know, it's not a nice reflection. So I think I think we need to fix that as a society. Yeah. You know, it's nice when you tell it on television, but you got households that get traumatized through that because that's something that they went through. Yeah. And I would like to apologize unreservedly for such families because um, then watching Mubango means something else for them. Mm. You know, it's, it's shocking that at times we tell stories that are just stories. And at times we tell stories that provokes real emotions to people. Mm. And when you meet such people and they relay that to you, you're like, hmm, had we known this, maybe we wouldn't have tell. This but way, yeah. Unfortunately, such is life. Mm. You know, you 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 do this, it's good for others. You do this, it's painful for others. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's it's one of those. But um to answer you, I'm not lost to the television fraternity. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I just take a break, you know, focus on this and that. Mm. But um if I found something iconic, I would I would embrace it. Yeah. Um let me hear what the producers want to see me for. Maybe, Maybe they have something new. Maybe it was not your body. Again, we deal with cases like that in court in South Africa. Uh, Maybe you, it wasn't your body you think, in the fire. I'm just saying, I'm just thinking. Nah, nah. It's got to some of back somewhere. I can't do it, Ram. Maybe it was another body in the ah, fire. Ah, Mr. Machiavelli, I won't go No, no. Go on, the character died, but they still want to have a chat. <laughs> you would like to believe that we reflect that as a society. No. But anyway, it's happening in South Africa. So, it is, it yeah. is. But I don't think it's universal. I don't think it's all society that ah, lives in that world. South Africa. Go to other countries, man. You'll hear shocking things. I'm sure of that. Yeah. Mind you, mind you, what we tell on television reflects um, the reality. True. Yeah. Of course, you know, we put our own exaggeration here and there to make drama. Yeah. But in the main, um, we tell stories that are compelling and influenced by daily lives but you have to agree with me at least that television in south africa because we we are so young yeah to it and so young to ourselves as a democracy as a democracy yes, yes. it has played a huge role yeah in the mindset yeah. that we became in, yeah look at your life yeah. your life as a young child you yeah. even remember the moment you saw tv for the first time yes and it influenced you so much true imagine to an average child over i know for sure with the mm. a team we grew mm. up with the a team and all of those type of shows yeah and the influence that they had in our language in mm. our style mm. so so that's why i say as much as tv is a reflection of reality yeah it's also the other way around where TV influences, influences the reality. life. Yeah. yeah, but I think I think therefore that then calls for for producers to be mindful of mm. the future that they want to see. That's it in in in, in their kids and um, the country as a whole, because it can be that um, we continuously um, derail, you know, um, the path of life in this man and fashion. Mm. Um, we need to be accountable and we need to do things within the ambit of, you know, responsibility That's it. And, 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 and caution because, uh, hey, we have a responsibility to execute and that responsibility needs to be executed within the ambit of a family and a country that aspires to be a better society. Of course, you yeah. and I would always acknowledge that we will never live in a mm. utopia world, but... Um, we can strive to be a better, at least better. Yeah. yeah. Was there ever a, a a temptation to leave earlier because you felt this is just too long? Well, there were moments that were triggering to say maybe it's about time. Maybe it's yeah. about time. But looking at the responsibility of the show in terms of you know um, uplifting the vendor culture, yeah. um, uplifting and showcasing you know the demographics of where I come from. I found, you know, um, comfort mm -hmm. in, you know, delaying or prolonging my stay there and um, meeting um, different people from different backgrounds, um, speaking highly of the show and mm -hmm. its responsibility, uh, be it educationally and, and, and socially. I... I, I I got encouraged, mm, yeah, to, to stay. stay. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And other shows where you felt there's a better one elsewhere. I'm leaving this one. Look, frankly speaking, in 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 South African television, there's no show that is better than Mubango. Mm. 
um, depending on how you look at it. True. And when you look at it, you must look at the value. Um, Mubango is the only show that you can watch with your grandmother mm. and your nephew mm. or niece and and still feel that you're watching a show that represents family. Yeah. Um, of course, there are moments where we miss the mark here and there, but in the main, we are still a family show and that needs to be celebrated and be acknowledged. Yeah. We are still a show that um, embraces everybody. And uh, everybody gets to see themselves. Mm. And I think that's the television that we need, the television that reflects who we are as people, as South Africans, a television show that can carry our hopes, mm. you know, and, and aspirations as, as, as a nation. And, and I think Mubango encompasses that because it also infuses or incorporates, you know, the so-called traditional elements. True. Yeah. So other shows are just, you know... Um, just yeah. shows to keep entertaining. So, I guess, I guess, and the educational aspects are very minimal. True. So, so it will be difficult for me to embrace, you know, other, other shows, shows that don't yeah. have the brevity that Movango carries. Do you feel uh, sometimes that I don't know how you see the world when it comes to indebtedness, where you feel like I, I owe these people so much. Yeah. They've given me the life that I have. Yeah. <laughs> Do you walk around with that? <laughs> Or a year. Is that is that the sense you're picking? No. <laughs> on, the, on the contrary, on the contrary, not. I'm curious to know your personality. <laughs> I'd love to do movies. Um, yeah. I'd love to do movies and and shows that are legendary. Mm. That that I'm keen to embrace. But um, there's nothing wrong yeah. with feeling that you are indebted to this mm. because. At some stage in life, you know, you meet people and they become your family. Mm. Therefore, you are indebted to them True. to, you know, remain loyal to them. Um, but your loyalty must not be blindfolded, so to say. Mm. Yeah, you do this for me, you know, I do this mm. for you. And, and and again, and this ties with the political aspect that we tapped into to say, let's look at the bigger picture. And if the bigger picture is compelling, let's journey there. Mm. We will have differences along the journey, but let's look at the core of mm. what we are about. And that needs to be appreciated. We have a common goal. Yeah. Too. If we've got common goals and common goals are nation building, then I'm in. Yeah. So your own productions, have you been interested? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, the other things that I'm doing on the sideline that that fulfills me more than you know production more than yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. it's not yeah, 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 my yeah. boss you know we stress him enough man <laughs> <laughs> don't want to marry his stress <laughs> you already know what you're yeah. going through so 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 mr mashabella if we all want to have productions yeah it defeats the purpose that's true yeah it defeats yes. the purpose yeah um of course one needs to aspire to be a producer so that you can push you know, um, the narrative that you would want to 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 to, to yeah. realize in your country, in your society, and that has got a meaning. You know, um, yeah. Then I would find value in that. Imagine this headline. Yeah. Uh, as in doing it back <laughs> on on Movanko in the next two weeks. I say this because TV has killed people and brought them back to life again, many, 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 many times. <sighs> That will be good for, for the viewers. Yeah. But at the same time, um, will that be good for the story? Hey, man. Uh, won't that the story we'll, lose credibility? We'll adjust. <laughs> we'll adjust. <laughs> we'll, you know how it is. <sighs> Let's see how it goes. Let yeah. me have the encounter with, you know, the yes. producers on Monday. Is it Tuesday or Wednesday? Somewhere yeah. there. Yeah. And then we'll take it from there. But... um. It will be good, you know, if ever they say, you know, come back and then we work on your terms and conditions, then I'm yeah. called to... Are, are you open to whatever happens? No, as I alluded earlier on, I'm amiable. So, yes, yeah. whatever happens, happens. Yeah, but... It, it has to work for you. Precisely. Yeah. Precisely. Jeez, has the, has the te television industry been good to you? No, very, mm. very. Um, the industry that we work in, it's cruel, man. Yeah, it has got empty promises here and then. You can be doing so well this season. And the next season, mm. you know, you are nowhere to be found. And yes, you said earlier on when you're saying, you know, you 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 went for this audition and you were taken the men and way that you were taken. And somewhere else, there could be 
a highly competent yeah. and qualified somebody, even academically. And that person did not get that opportunity. Yeah. So, so that's the nature of television. That's the nature of our industry. But what is more compelling is, is to have a sound relationship with, you know, your colleague, your peers in the game and, mm. and the producers, then, yeah. Be, be, a, be, be a nice guy. Be, yeah, don't, don't <laughs> cause unnecessary havoc. Mm. You know, like even now when I leave, you know, I engage my, my producer and he said, no, thank you. Uh, for you know being honorable in this manner as opposed to people who when the season ends they just run away and not yeah. say goodbye properly so it's important that when you when you leave you close the door properly mm. it carries it carries much respect for you True. as opposed to creating um unfavorable environment yeah i'm, I'm yeah. going to make it difficult for people who are going to uh subtitle this yeah diva. I don't know what they're going to write. It's your language. I don't know what they're going to write. <laughs> <laughs> <It's a bottom. laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so, so it's important to end things in a mm. decent way. Yeah, you know, we still need each other as people, as, as as mankind. And if we contaminate the space, it becomes difficult to live with. You're using better words than me. Yeah, we contaminate. Mm. <laughs> I mm. said no, no, no. It's it's important that yeah. you know we create enabling if not a conducive environment for yeah. us to to live because when we we have a conducive environment we flourish better and even when we are parting ways we can devise means of saying this is how we you know mm, how we, we hang it yes. yeah yeah we we as this channel our job is one yeah we celebrate great south africans mm. but i realize more and more that we we learn from them yeah uh, and they become our teachers. And I, I sit here and say to you, uh, my family loves your show. Yeah. At some point, I used to have the task of writing radio ads for SABC 1, 2, and 3. Yeah. I wasn't a, an avid viewer of Bobango. I used to call home. Yeah. And they would tell me, oh, no, this is what he's doing. <laughs> yeah. So you are you are stable in a lot of families. Mm -hmm. and, and I wonder if you even aware of this, that there are families whose day is incomplete <laughs> if they didn't engage with you. <laughs> no, I, I used to think I'm aware yes. until I leave the show. And hey, boy, no, <laughs> no. Um, people were uncomfortable and um, saying all sorts of, you know, uh, emotional things that, you know, how could you betray us like this? Jeez. And I felt bad, man. Mm. And I felt bad, you know. Um, I felt bad. I went into social media. Like, I can't believe they're talking about me, you know. Jeez, in this uh, way. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And especially when I'm still alive, you mm. know. Um, I went to the Tibo Touch show. Wow. Wow. It was it, more. It was big, man. <laughs> it was big. And how, you know, Tibo Touch embraced me and his colleagues. It was like, wow. Yeah. But um, I think there's value in doing good. Mm. You know, when you do good, the good will follow you wherever you go. Yeah. And, and you touch people differently. You touch people differently. And I think that's what we should strive for. Because mm. if you grow, you know, um, in your work, you grow in favor and wisdom. True. Yeah. Do you know something stands out about you? you, you the statement is value in doing good. Mm. I want to complete it with with a one word. Yeah. In doing good quietly. Yeah. Because there's something that stands out about you mm -hmm. that you just quietly in your lane. No. Minding your business. There's no need to go hoo ha. Yeah. Because um, and that's what my mom taught me to say. When you make too much noise, when it collapses, you'll be left with an egg on your face. Mm. So do your things quietly. And when people get to know about you, they will respect you more. True. As opposed to you uh, being all over the show and then saying this and that and that and that. When they get closer to you, they find emptiness because you have given everything out. Yeah. So, so uh, yeah, now we try. It's not easy, though, especially <laughs> in the you know, society that we live in um, now, being influenced by social media and so on true, and so on. True. Yeah, I wish to see you on TV very soon. So um, we, we wait. 
Yeah, I'm sure other producers are listening to say, you know, <laughs> you know, yeah, in movie, in yeah, movies, on you Netflix, know what I mean, yeah, in a big American show uh, yeah. or South African show that's yeah. that's played all over the world. You get what you I know? mean. So that's that's what we wish. But for. the SABC has got you know a gigantic footprint. No, I know it all too well. I'm, yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm a I'm a I'm a Kaida. <laughs> I'm a Kaida who's deployed on a radio show between between twelve and. 10. Hey, <laughs> Hey. I'm an absolute uh, soldier of, of the SABC movement. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's yeah. SABC and 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 SABC and uh, and Sundowns for me. Those are my loyalties. I wish you well. I think you're an amazing South African, and we're very lucky to have shared, uh, you know, this moment with you. And and we're happy that you were able to share your story. And I I'll tell you this much. This is I have a feeling this is the beginning for you. Yeah. There's a lot more coming. Okay. You know, we were sitting here with a. Uh, a giant of a man mm -hmm. and that the guy yeah the legend and you know what i mean and you realize in moments like this yeah that i feel like i'm having a conversation with him 40 years earlier hmm. that's this feeling mm. and there's a lot more that he still has to tell to us to do yeah 40 years later yeah and we'll sit back and then say here there's so much that happened in the last 40 years and you'll be sharing a, another story with us yeah so we look forward to it no, thank you so much for having me. And I believe that, you know, um, life is made of different chapters. Mm. And here we go to the next chapter. Here we go. Are, you, ex are you excited? Chapter. Extremely. <laughs> Extremely. No, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I'm looking forward. Mm. And... And in no time, maybe I should come back and talk about, you know, the, the new, new venture. You should. Are you are you nervously excited? Like you're bungee jumping. And that's my biggest fear. Yeah. Yeah. So 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 on, on my spare time, I like, you know, exercising and 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 hiking. And what I like about hiking is that the higher you go, you see a different view. Mm. But as you go and you know, you can't see a view, you become more nervous. <laughs> but it's in that nervousness where you feel encouraged to go because you're seeing the sky you're like oh True. when i get there i might touch the sky you mm. sometimes then you think like going. a child yes. and then you keep going because it's encouraging but when you're up there on top of the mountain the view is even better yeah. so 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 that again says there's power in enduring mm. the pain because after the pain comes glory yeah yeah Speaking to someone who's gone up Kilimanjaro, trust me, I know all about it. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, Singer well, Gabriel. Thank you so much. Eh? Nah. That's us. And I know, I wish you had taught me Venda. My vocabulary is three words. Yeah. And it's so bad. L let's hear it in, as uh, you wrap up. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's the greetings. Mm. I know. Okakat or something like that. You know, and sometimes you trust people and they embarrass you. I'm so. I trusted you. <laughs> <laughs> we can try other languages, not this one. Uh, uh, no, it's, I'm here for my language. I'm here as an ambassador of the language. I, I know, no, man. Not other languages, my own I, language. I know. Yeah. Do, do you know. Do you know, I feel so bad because on the radio, yeah. when somebody calls in many other South African languages, yeah. I'm able to navigate very smoothly. And smoothly so, yeah. Char comes Venda. Dude, I'm so lost for words. I don't even know what Kanabari, to do What's myself. the best way of learning the language? It's to get a girlfriend. <laughs> so go go to Tando, my brother. I can't. Let me take you there. Let me take you there. Who like, knows? You might see an angel that side of the world. There's a, there's a, maybe I'm, I'm scarred. There's a lady I liked when I was doing first year at varsity and she was from Venda and she didn't like me back and her rejection was very harsh and ah. I've... That was then and this is now, man. <laughs> you have improved drastically. So... <laughs> My life is better. Is exactly. Yeah, there's much you can promise. <laughs> <laughs> then I, I was promising Compared that to then, where you were promising, you know, <laughs> pencils and... <laughs> so, I mean, but the language is sexually transmitted. <laughs> Thank you again. I wish you well, eh? Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, everybody. That was great. He might be back on Mwang. Just keep watching it. <laughs> you want that one, eh? I can tell her you want it. Because you have a meeting. <laughs> I have a meeting and, is. you know, my people are saying I've betrayed them. You know, I've got calls from ministers and traditional leaders back at home. Thank you. And and will they get another chief or do you care? They have to. I... There has to be an inheritance. Because that's how it works. Yeah.
But Argentina has got kids, so the kids can that's take over point. the reins. Hey, that's the, the point I'm making. Yeah, and also the new chief might bring an array of other things that are so positive and a different style of leadership okay. that is contrary to what Argentina was doing. It might be a disguise. You got what I mean? You wearing a disguise. <laughs> Being a new chief. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think. I can't get TV. We can exaggerate it. They can say a, a long lost oh! a long lost twin. Let's write this. Yeah. A long lost twin. Uh, has been found. But I can do that. Actually, you're giving us a storyline. There you go. L let me call my boss after this. Done. A long lost twin has been and found. And I changed the German cut. And... No, many things change. You yeah. are you you come rough and and, and on around the edges. And you are it. you are not traditional. No, 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 no. This one is cosmopolitan and proper. That's it. Yeah. He wants them to buy shares in MTN. Exactly. Serious stuff now. <laughs> Upgrading from Azin. You are right. There you go. There's, uh, there's a food for thoughts. I want my shares. <laughs> <laughs> Take care, everybody. <laughs> On that note. <laughs> King King David Studio Podcast.